I've been around the YouTubers, the biggest influencers. Everything you see is for content. 99% is fake. That's my issue. Like these young guys with emotion, they're like insecure. Be an example. When you're an example, you don't have to pitch anything. People will say, why is he so nice? Why? And what yeah. this? And then they'll follow. Mm. That's how the prophet did it. So how was your relationship with Andrew Tate and how did it start? One thing I want to make clear, the impact he had for this the Muslim revolution, I'll call it, is massive. It'll be historic. Bro, I'm telling you on a daily basis, I'm not going to say to show off how many people revert or message me and DM me because of him. Bro, it's insane. A secret that nobody else knows. Untold secret about Tam Khan. Well, that secret might get me in jail. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Make, let's make it do it. Yeah. Do you have an airplane mode and also? Yeah. May Allah untie any knots from our tongue, expand for us our chest, allow us to speak the truth, allow us to be leaders for the righteous, allow us to be alone in this room without shaitan, and may Allah forgive us for any of our slips or mess ups from shaitan from ourselves. May Allah inspire us to speak the truth and motivate people to Islam. Allahumma ameen. Wow, that's the best introduction I swear I've ever seen on a podcast. Wallahi. And this part's off camera. Is just it? For us. Yeah, just yeah. for us. Just put that on camera, bro. Yeah. It's okay. recording anyway. That's a it. very good point. You should actually. show people what you do. Like, Why that's, not? This is the best. People should see that. That's an example, bro. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. I've been doing that on every podcast. Yeah. We just never that's, I like, but that's good that people know you don't show it off. Like, you should post, uh, post this. Mm. Yeah, that's a yeah, great point. Because for me, already not, they're my favorite pod already because of this. I swear. Really? Wow. Yeah, that's like funny. everything. Like the other day, I bought a new car. Sorry, off topic. We'll start. Like, I'm dictating your podcast. Go for I'm it, man. Not, no. I'm not an A. You don't help. <laughs> We're already so, in, no intro needed. Let's always go. play Bakra. Any business I bring, I bring an imam. We set place to Bakra for the whole premises. Do duas before I open. Anything. That's what I always do. Anything. Duas, and even in your good times, is most important. You know? Yeah. People always, when they have hardships, praying and you know? Yeah. So things like this is very important. I do it all the time myself, but yeah. it's good to see you know, on a pod. But I've never yeah. done a pod, so alhamdulillah, I've learned something today. You've reminded me, it's a very good way to start. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you, man. We were actually talking with uh, Ahmed Ben Shaba yesterday, and he was telling us, we asked about our podcast, you know, what he thinks and like how to be, you know, successful. He's like, lead by example, right? So even like you mentioned, putting this. That's uh, on. Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, yeah Aquaman. My brother. I don't know his real name. <laughs> I know Aquaman. Aquaman, sorry. Aquaman. Shout but you don't look like Jason Momoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you're better looking than me, so it's okay. Oh, may Allah bless you guys, man. Alhamdulillah. But. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the Dunya, the three Muslims today. Alhamdulillah, we are at TK MMA Fit with our brother Tam Khan. How are you doing today, my man? Alhamdulillah. It's a pleasure to have you, brothers. We were planning this for how many months? It's long. Oh, we wanted to do this back when. I'm handshake, so I need to get revenge now. You know, sometimes <laughs> they try and they see me because I'm fat. They're trying to squeeze my hand, so. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to set this up. When was the last Back in day? February. February. It yeah. never worked out. Yeah. They stood me up like a. Ugly man on a date, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I was all prepared. But yeah, alhamdulillah, everything works for uh, happens for a reason. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabb. Alhamdulillah. Allah's the best of planners. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabb. All right, let's just jump into it. You just opened up a restaurant, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, Tuesday's a launch, and alhamdulillah, like uh, it's my latest project. Um, restaurant, nice catering, watching sports. You know, like we like uh, f football. You call it soccer. I'm not sure. Yeah. Boxing, UFC, and uh, it's located in the same place, same building as this. So it's just, you know, I realize every day I'm eating out, I've got this bad habit of meeting people and this, that, and eating. I thought, why don't we just get our own place? I'm spending so much money and wasting on these places. Let's yeah. make our own. We're always in something. And then, halas, you know, when you try to live life on doing this, it's not that you're limited, but most times you socialize in restaurants or cafes and gyms. So why not make one spot for everyone to come to? Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And this, I honestly, like, I, I really like this place. First time walking in, like, the atmosphere is so nice. It feels like a community. Everyone knows each other. You got a, a barber shop and everything. Yeah, yeah. Allahumma It's like anything a person could need, you know, right here. Yeah, you know, um, it's good. It's just a one-stop shop. And uh, yeah, you know, as a man, like, I mean, look, you guys have got nice hair, but with me, I don't need to sh uh, <laughs> style it. But with this comes a lot of uh, responsibility shaving all the time. Otherwise, mm. I have that helipad, you know? <laughs> and it doesn't look right, so my wife might run away. So um, <laughs> I always think, you know, and it's a spot where guys can train, shower, uh, get shaved or whatever they do, beard trims and shape and everything. And well, that's all in one area. Why not? Nowadays, people are not like the old days. They're lazy. They want to come to one spot and just do everything. So yeah. you have to keep up with the needs of the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. I want to know a little bit more about Tamcon before TK mm. MMA, you know, back in the days. You told us a little bit about it before. Mm. But have you ever spoken about it on a podcast? 
I'm sure I've spoken some things, but go away, no problem. We can talk, discuss anything. All right, let's, let's talk about your journey, you know, in regards to Islam. So Islam, of course, of course I'm, I'm proud, alhamdulillah, blessed, mm -hmm. born as a Muslim. Like some people for their lifetime might not even hear the message. So yeah. they'll hear the message, sorry, I'll reiterate. Everyone will get the message, but in a right manner where it'll uh, affect them positively. So Pashtun parents, Afghanistan heritage, um, and very conservative Muslim family, as in... Uh, Feared my mum more than anyone to the point where to this day I'm nearly 43, married. If there's a kissing scene on TV, change the channel. Your wife can't touch you. Like, you know, it's manners. It's like, it's very, very conservative. Pashtun kind of, uh, it's like a tribal code. Um, and yeah, since a early age, I remember learning stories of the prophets, Quranic stories. So as a young age, I knew about Suleiman, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Musa to Ibrahim. So my mom used to tell us stories like that and how to pray. And uh, it was all from the household, which I think is very important and, and losing now. Uh, that's the source university for all the kids. Don't stress on masjid and uh, content. It starts at home. So if your kids are stray or you've been astray, that means your parents didn't do the right job. And what I mean that by they might really teach you and push it, but it's also how you do it, not forcing it, not being yeah. aggressive. Mm, absolutely. And I was raised in a very predominantly non-Muslim area, very English. I was the only brown face there. No one knew what Islam was. The closest masjid was a 45 minute drive. Wow. It was a converted church. So um, it was like this. I, I, uh, you know, you had to, you was a bit shamed as well. Young kid, you had to mm. act cool. But um, never, it's, uh, I never went astray. My, my mother trusted me, my sister and brother, because we were raised well to the point where we never hid anything. We just talked to her, her father. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, like I was taught in such a manner that I never touched a drug or alcoholic substance my whole life and I was raised in an area where it was kind of common. There was no other Muslims there. You couldn't really, if you prayed, no one knew what you're doing. What's he doing? What's all this spending? You have to, you kind of hid. Ramadan, yeah. you just fast, you go to school and you fast. You won't tell anyone. <laughs> They're all eating in front of you and just like this, like, you know? So, but it's all thanks to my parents, you know? So uh, I have to always appreciate it. If it wasn't for them, nothing, you know? I won't be here, obviously. Everything comes from Allah, but they, they, uh, they facilitated it. Yeah, they did it yeah. in a way where I think it's important. So you can learn. I learned from that as a father myself. May Allah bless them. Yeah, Amen. 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 So being a son to your parents, what are some of the lessons that you've extracted from how they've parented you and you use that today, inshallah, with your children? Obviously, the teaching of the religion, Islam, and uh, the importance of it in an early age, but not forcing it. Hmm. My parents didn't really force it. Like they were kind of like letting us do our own thing, but in a way where we knew what respect was. But mostly the best thing they've taught me is how to respect everyone, be humble. My mom always told me, never walk on this earth like the chronic saying, like you own it, we're nothing. There's, and she'd always say, you can be anything you want. There's Mike Tyson's there or Maradona. You could be that. I'm like, no, I couldn't. Yes, you can. Everyone's equal. Everyone's a human. It's just working hard. And I have that belief to this day. And um, then you learn other things through time. Times have changed. I was born in the 80s, so mm -hmm. you could get a little slap or... Your mum could, an auntie could slap you or someone else's mum could slap you. It was the way it was. And you get told off by a teacher. I'd be told off all the time being bad in school. And my parents would say, suspend him more. Hit him. I don't go hit him with a stick. They're like, no, we don't do that anymore. My dad goes, it's fine. I let you hit him. So different era, bro. You can't do that anymore. Like the times have changed. Everyone's gone a bit soft. But uh, yeah, like I'm like, it made me who I am. And uh, I never feared anything. Always been a strong believer. Always been confident. Whatever I do will be successful. If it's not, it's from a line the yeah, I think, uh, but I'm a bit softer as a parent myself, me, myself. I've got daughters, so Alhamdulillah, like with me, I'm too soft. I, I'm like, I can't tell them off. Like mm. then if I raise my voice, I feel so bad. I'm like, look at them and go, why did I do that? <laughs> so I'm going to be a pushover, unfortunately. I like that, bro. I like that. As, as men, may Allah keep our hearts soft, bro. Mm. That's something that's beautiful about Islam. It highlights a lot of these things, these practical things, real life things with your family that like in the West, they won't leave to, they don't care about families in the West at all, frankly. Like someone hits, you know, 18 years old, male, female, doesn't matter. A parent can kick them out of the house. Like you're an adult, fend for yourself. And people have ended up homeless that way, unfortunately. So speaking about Islam, what are some things that Islam has kind of taught you or that you've uncovered about Islam that has stood out to you, you know, in the, in the recent years? Anything about masculinity or manhood? Just how to be humble. Like, you know, I think a lot of translations or I won't even say translations, sorry. People who relay their message, there's a lot of misinterpretations going around as yeah. younger. Oh, we have to be this tough guy. <laughs> yeah, tell the wife to get in the kitchen. It's all fake. If we really 
follow the sunnah of the Prophet, mm. peace be upon him, and how he was a soft, gentle, loving man. And then you change. I used to be too hard, tough, um, this, that, you know, very, they say, like, over the top, like, friends would avoid me. I was a bit, like, aggressive like that. It's the wrong way. And uh, just how the Prophet was with his wives, the kids, um, to people. I mean, there's an old hadith of when he used to walk past this old woman who used to be against him and his message. And uh, you throw feces and garbage at him every day, every day. And then one day it stopped. So he was questioning, where's this lady? What's wrong? And they found out she was sick. And he went to visit her and she had shock on her face. Like, how can you come visit me? I used to curse you. And he said, no, because I was worried. One day you didn't throw garbage. I wanted to see what's wrong. <laughs> and then she uh, apparently revered on the time. So, I mean, just an example of what a man he was, who we should admire to be. So I've realized that Islam... It's perfect in all aspects and also Allah is the most merciful. So, you know, we all make mistakes. We all uh, sometimes complacent, delay a prayer, rude, curse, whatever it is. N none of us, we're all, you all sin every day. Mm -hmm. Whereas my major or minor. But Allah is the most merciful. You have to understand that. So don't stop from praying or don't stop from asking forgiveness <coughs> and liquor, you know. So that's what I learned. And it took me a long time to learn that. Also, the aspect of rizq and what's meant to be. So yeah, nothing phases me. I've had highs and lows. It's a stress me and I'm a big thing, like thinking I couldn't sleep. And now it is what it is. If I, if I die tomorrow, I'm ready to go. And I, I've mm -hmm. never been that so strong willed. You know, uh -huh. it is what it is. My uh -huh. only goal uh, now is to be old enough to see my kids married off, inshallah, someone to protect them. Because if I'm not there, that's one thing, you know, inshallah. and see them raised as good Muslims. That's my goal right now as a man and i don't care i would substitute that for money anything else you know so yeah. these things you learn and uh the masculine thing yeah of course be a man as in masculine it means many things mm. what does that mean oh, i'm the tough guy it means lead by example be the protector the provider also be a father figure where everyone when you go you're respected people can always say he was a good man. He was a good man. He was an honest man. Yeah. I don't care if people say he's a tough guy. Well, what's that to be proud of? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, I want to die. And when I, my time comes, I don't want to die, but when I do, shall I, I want them to say yeah, he was a good man. Everyone can say he was honest. He was a bit too honest at times, but he was honest. He never cheated someone. He never stole something. Good father, good man. And that's, that's how you're remembered. And that's due to the real teachings of Islam. So, yeah. you know, with time, you learn that. Like... There's a time and place to be tough and masculine. But yeah. We're in an era where we don't need to be. Yeah. Unless you're performing in martial arts or a sport. Where, you know, I used to have it lose my temper on Deliveroo. You know, Uber Eats drivers? Yeah. Like these miskeen, they're like poor guys from South Asian continent working for nothing, like peanuts, in the heat, driving motorbikes. And obviously, they just come on over the border and drive the motorbikes. They don't know how to be skilled. Yeah. They get in the car or they'd be late and you'd... I'd lose my temper and then one day I'm like, oh, SubhanAllah, look at me. What an arrogant clown. Who am I? These guys are working and I'm just, they could have had a bad day. They're new to the place. And look at me over a late McDonald's or a Pizza Hut. And like shame like that. So calm is so have like, relax your temper and how your mannerisms. It's, it's everything. It's not just posting uh, messages about Islam and uh, being nice. It's also your character, how you treat people. Yeah. Like, uh, all my staff love me because it doesn't matter what position. I don't, I'm not no boss. I just said, I don't like this word boss. Just be, everyone's the same. You know, so you have to be humble because we are nothing, bro. Mm. I'm just blessed in certain ways that other people are blessed in other ways. It doesn't mean anything. You can be six foot two, five foot four, muscular, skinny, fat, money. It means nothing. We're nothing. None of us are even close to the Sahaba or those days. Who do we think, yeah? Let alone prophets and let alone like, who are we? Mm. You know, so you have to be humble. Like, uh, there's a narrative going around on socials about make this, have this car, be you. It's all BS. It's all crap. And I, I'm getting fed up of seeing these influencers trying to push this portrayal, which is fake. It's just yeah. fake. And uh, majority renting cars, majority using other people's houses. And uh, and if they've got it, good. But we showing off for? You're not Bill Gates even. And he, why is he showing off? You're not Elon Musk. You're not mm -hmm. Mohammed bin Salman. Who are you? Nothing. Yeah. They could buy you. And then there's someone, you know? So... There's always a bigger fish. I don't understand this whole concept of guys wearing their little suits, walking around like 15 years old, I'm making <laughs> this much money, bro. No one cares. <laughs> I swear, it doesn't impress anyone. You can go to people in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Iraq, Lebanon. Poor people are smiling more than these people. So it means nothing. You're telling me you're bigger than them? No. Hmm. Okay, so I found this on the web for a people smiling more than...
Shaitan is the scene. Yeah, Shaitan is the scene, bro. So has it always been like this for you? No, no, like I've always been to an extent humble, I swear. People, my face comes across differently, but Allah's gave me a face I deserve, I guess. But uh, <laughs> um, angry, but I've never like uh, seen myself, like you'll never see me. I'll do content before for stupid campaigns and things in social media, but I'm never one to uh, this and that. It's always been there, but more so as I had children, more so in the last five, six years, because I realized life's more deep bro tomorrow never comes today we could finish mm. this i could have a heart attack live i could leave one of you die in a car accident then what then we go see the creator what how are you going to impress the creator mm. like how yeah i had a nice car and a ferrari and i had this and i was I had a six pack i'm six foot two and what were your good deeds this so we have to learn that with age of the wiser you get i lost two friends last two years and uh it's a test it shows anyone one was 32 years old younger than like it shows you anyone's time is when you really least expect. It's, and it's mm. a reminder, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, go to graveyards often, visit them, go to um, janazas. It is a reminder. Why? Just to remind yourself. Don't get too comfortable. This dunya is it's, it's temporary. And I started to get more into that le- uh, recently. Yeah, I've had my times and pushing this and that, but films influence people. A lot of these things when people go, be this, be this boss, it's from movies. They get influenced by these Godfather, Scarface, this corny stuff. It's good to watch whatever you want to watch, but bro, it's, it's a movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm, yeah. Relax, be real, and stop pushing this because like uh, a brother, Shams, he wants, always makes this point, point in all his talks, and I love it. He says, the West ban gang violence, guns, murder, uh, rape. This, that, these are all illegal, no? It yeah. should be. But they'll pay rappers millions of dollars to perform these things on stage. That's very true. And then like, I'm gonna drive by you shoot. So, you know, you're mm. you're paying them millions of dollars to perform this on stage. I'm guilty. I listened to hip hop when I was a kid, and I like uh, I can't lie. But you're you're going for one thing, but you're promoting this kind of thing. So you know what I'm saying? A, mm. And it made me think he's spot on right with that. So these are legal. Then why are you pushing this uh, agenda? Yeah, I think that's the main difference between Islam and the West. In the West, their priority is just money, military power, conquer the whole earth. They have made themselves the sovereign. That's, that's all they care about. In Islam, people are like, you know, why you guys ban everything? Why is everything haram, haram? Why is everything forbidden? Because when we know something's bad or something's wrong, we actually stay away from it. We value the good of society over the good of the individual or like what I want to do versus what you want to do. We we take what's good for all of society as a whole. So when people like, they look at Islam like it's, oh, this is haram, this is haram. Every single thing, you know, uh, drugs, alcohol, gambling, you, uh, riba, you can link it to like an excessive, um, you know, uh, disease yeah, or some kind of every, uh, yeah, some kind of insane harm. No, I agree with that. I also want to say one, clarify one thing. Sometimes I'm a bit harsh on my podcast. The West, when we say the West, we mean the leadership and the agenda. We don't mean the people in the West because there's yeah. very good non-Muslim. There's very innocent people in all these countries. I was in the States lately. The most friendliest race I've ever met. Welcoming. You can pray. I saw sisters covering. Not one look at them. You can live in, subhanAllah, some places in the West have more freedom to practice Islam than yes. our own countries. Yes. Let's not lie. Yeah. Let's not uh, beat around the bush. So the problem is agendas behind the leaders and the people who control. It's all about money and monetary. But there are good people there. And everyone, Allah, will re- the message will hit everyone. But not everyone will have the good message. Because us Muslims, mm-hmm. we have a bad examples also. Yeah. Crazy dawah speakers, too intense. So, so unfortunately, we had, the Prophet's not around anymore. So mm, if he was, sense. the whole world would be Muslim. Yeah. So that's our jo- job, to give a good message and be an example. Oh, she's wearing this, or she's uh, showing too much, or he's doing this. No, speak to them. Like, be an example. If you're not an example, who would, why would you become a Muslim? Yeah. From mm. the way the media, why would you become Muslim when you see this, like, oh, you're haram, you do this. No one's going to come. The mm. Prophet won't do that. So we, we have to... Fix our own house. And I don't think enough Muslims do. Yeah. I watch Dawah speeches, this, that, and it's too much. There's fitna between Dawah speakers, bro. Yeah. There's wars over who's a better Dawah guy. It's, it's embarrassing now. Like, for me, I'm not a scholar. I haven't, I've got a limit. I won't go out and do speeches. And stuff. I haven't got the knowledge. But I can do Dawah to an English person just to tell the perks of Islam, meaning spread a good message. And everyone should do that. But be an example. You can't. Give a good message, then go raving on a weekend, or give a good message and be a drug dealer, or give a good message and then be 
punching your wife and kids. It's an example, and people know that. Example, you, you can know when someone enters the room and how people greet them or react to them by their character. You, you can't fake it. Yeah. There's fear and there's respect, and respect's there because they're good to everyone. So we have to be an example of Islam. And we all say, we love the Prophet, peace be upon us, but none of us act like him. Yeah. And until you really study him, not what the West portray, if you really study how he was, we, are, we wish we should be like that. So once we do that, then we should worry about the West, in my opinion. You can't control the government. None of us, well, we're just normal humans. We were living there. You've got people we earn there. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, do not break a contract. So as citizens, when you have these passports, it's haram to go against and uh, like betray those contracts. Don't let them take you out of Islam, of course. But you're a citizen, live by the laws of land, as long as it doesn't take you out of Islam. This is, by, this is Islamic hukum. Yeah. That contract as you get a passport. So that's the beauty of Islam. When the Byzantians took in the Prophet, peace be upon him, like he was amongst them. Yeah. But free to practice our religion. They're not making us stop praying. They're not making you not do your mm. fast. They're letting you do what you want. Yeah. They're not saying, like France are, but in Canada or London, take off that hijab. They're not. You want to pray, go Jummah, here's a two hour break. They let you. So respect it too and be an yeah. example then everyone will follow. Don't follow to say we're the best. No, just show why Islam's the best. And yeah. that's, that's the goal, bro. I think a lot of us missing that... Uh, that strategy, myself before for many years, that is how you do it, be an example. And if you are, it speaks for itself. Yeah, a lot of people think that living in the West, we're oppressed, Islamophobia, you know, it's a buzzword that we can't practice Islam. Yet, how many of us look at it as a dawah opportunity like it is? That every think, single day yeah. we could just give dawah. Bro, they, uh, I think there's no oppression, as in the government says, well, there's very many bad things will happen, which sure, it yeah. takes a domino yeah. effect to why immigration is like it is. We all know this, we don't have to get into this. Many bad uh, Western governments have invaded poor countries for oil and money and that's why you see this aggression also but I was born and raised UK and I could literally I'd see stands of guys with black flags saying they want Sharia law I'd see that in the 90s tw 2000s yeah wow. I don't care they understand that you have a preacher of a, uh, uh, in Christian preacher you have Hare Krishna's running they, they're speakers corner a place where you can say what you want literally People disrespect the royal family or whatever and the president's pride. Bro, you can't do that in any uh, other countries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't like that degeneracy. I don't like to disrespect anyone. I think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't even like when Muslims were, we don't believe in the royal family, queen, we're not, we don't, everyone's equal to us. But don't disrespect the dead. It's a sin as well. Yeah. Ah, oh, she's mm -hmm. just how, bro, the prophet would never do this. Yes, also, so we're all getting, oh, yeah, she's just, okay, whatever she's done, Allah judges. Why are you going out of your way making statuses cursing her? What's you look silly. Yeah. And that's my issue. Like these young guys with emotion, they're like insecure. Be an example. We're not, like, you know, like uh, be an example. When you're an example, you don't have to pitch anything. People will say, why is he so nice? Why? And what yeah. this? And then they'll follow. Mm -hmm. That's how the prophet did it. Yeah, we were talking about this with Hamza Zortis and it was like, judge me by my enemies. So if your enemies are people that aren't even a threat, then it shows a lot about yourself. Mm. You know? Yeah. This, I think a lot of the... Like uh, messages coming around sometimes are very bad, and I understand the animosity the West has to sometimes the Islam Muslims. It's not because of a, a small minority who are acting that way. I used to be going to a mosque in Essex, and there'd be guys outside chanting, Sharia law, the West, this, that, hate. And I said, guys, what are you doing? Why are you like, what's that going to do to the brothers? And why are you making this animosity? Let's pitch what's good about Islam and spread. Why are you so angry? And then if we hate it so much, why are we here? Mm. Let's go to Muslim land. Here, for a message, let's be an example. Let's show them the beauty of Islam because it's perfection. But they'll not see that. You know what I mean? They'll not see it. So it's very mm -hmm. important for me this, you know, that people are, are an example which we're supposed to follow. Yeah. That's a good point. And, and most people, I think, come to Islam because of things like that. You know, yeah. um, because uh, like a Muslim got, you know, bought them a pizza or Hamza was exactly. actually telling us that one guy, like, he came, he's like, oh, I found a contradiction here and there. And, you know, he tried to appeal to the guy emotionally and, like, you know, like it's, it, a lot of the time, there's a much better result there. So and in that case, the guy ended up like crying and stuff, subhanAllah. Yeah. Um, and he had a little bit of a freak out. But afterwards, he came back and alhamdulillah. I don't know if he accepted the Islam or not afterwards. But yeah, yeah a, lot of the, a lot of the time, like people were humans, right? We, people just want emotional connection, emotional understanding. Sometimes like if, I, if, I, if like uh, there's a guy who like yells at you in the street for being a Muslim, yells at your wife for wearing hijab, like, you know, sometimes taking a step back and, 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 and talking to them like a normal human being, given that they didn't do anything too crazy, they will end up respecting you more. 
you know, than if you if you say, come fight me, you know? Like, yeah, you might be scared 100%, of you. 100%, like, yeah. I would react badly back in the day. I didn't get that. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> on my face, I, I got away with much, a lot, but I'd react silly and think, why am I doing that? Like, it's haram for me to be stronger than someone and just take it out on them. Yeah. And then, I want it doesn't really get it, but I said, don't react. And then you calm and you walk away. What are you going to get from that? Unless you're do, it's a situation where you have to, mm. there's no need. Yeah. What, what am I going to slap like a, a small guy? What am I going to get from that? Okay, oh, wow, I look good beating him up. No more, it's haram. Be the bigger man. Like I told you, the prophet, peace be upon him, used to never confront. So then, like you said, they'll be like, wow, I just did this. I saw a sister once. Someone murdered her son, a Muslim hijabi in America, and she was forgiving the killer and this. Mm. And he was in tears. Like, that is power, bro. That's more impressive to me than a man knocking out 10 guys and stuff, you know? Yeah. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't. But that shows me real imam. Yeah. And, and not just you. The Prophet, uh, he, when he walked, there was a hadith that said when he walked into the masjid, he saw the sahaba. They were wrestling each other. So he asked, what are you doing? And they're like, we're wrestling. He's like, why are you wrestling? They're like, we wanted to see who was the strongest amongst us. And the Prophet was like, what is strength? What does it mean to be strong? They're like, you know, the strong one who is the one who can overtake the other one, and, you know, pin him down and all that stuff. And the Prophet said, no, the strong one is one who can hold in his anger when it's he's so mad. so true, bro. When I, I didn't understand, I used to think, what do you mean by that? That's very true. Control emotions when it's like some real hardship or calamity happens, then you see real strength. Yeah. Literally, I'm telling you, I've, I've been there. And that was my biggest test. And uh, some brothers gave me some advice, which helped me a lot because some things could go out of hand and mm. that's true then you really feel humble like you know like wow like i have self-discipline so yeah. that yeah, that's a that's the one a beautiful hadith that is yeah alhamdulillah there's been a lot of um a lot of like people in the red pill community who eventually come to islam or look to islam a lot of the time they take islam and like some hadith or some verse or some fact like you can have four wives out of context and they kind of basically make islam propagate their own red pill values do you have the same sentiment what's no, your experience with that I'm community? getting fed up with this I'm seeing a lot of these donkeys yeah <laughs> and they are donkeys how they behave so whoever takes offense to that is no problem like take it I'm calling you it right what Islam is not about the four wives uh, Surah Al-Nisa about the wife you know they take out of context anyone knows through times things change it's allowed yes but there's conditions to everything number one Number one, there's conditions to everything. You tell me, we can't even treat each other equally here. Yeah. Very hard, yeah? There's terms for this, yeah? The wife's thing. And first of all, treat your first wife well. Are you being a good Muslim husband? Are you spending time with her? Are you raising your kids with her? Are you trying to become better Muslims? Are you giving that attention? Or are you just bored and want halal sex? Let's be clear. Yeah. Is it just for halal sex or you really want to be married? That's mm. the th- first thing I get angry with. Second thing is these uh, terms of, um, oh, they're scorning the wife or being tough. No, there's no such thing. This anti-woman hatred is crazy. This, uh, what they post and the women are like this, women cheat more than them. No, they don't. Men are the most dominant race. Mm-hmm. When a man is a donkey, the woman's going to reflect the donkey. <laughs> you are the man. If you're weak, <laughs> she will be weak. It's a f- you're the man. Yeah. If she doesn't respect her husband, he's coming back, looking in the mirror and going out all night and just ignoring her and putting pictures in nightclubs and showing off. Bro, what do you expect? Yeah. I'm all, let her leave him and do the same back so mm. you feel. No, there's no pass for us to act like a, a degenerate monkeys. Yeah. This whole, uh, bro, we've got chapters. Khadija, Allah bless her, the first prophet's wife, she was a powerful, influential woman. Maryam, there's chapters on her. Aisha was a scholar. What, what are they, you know what I mean? The prophet used to lay on their laps and stuff, you know, his head. Yeah. The Prophet was the strongest of all men. Strength of temp, like, yes. it makes me laugh, you know what I'm saying? And I think, like, there's no shame in that. Yeah, be a man, but she's a reflection of you. Oh, she did this, that, then you're weak, you're soft, mm. you are a donkey. Yeah. You've come there shouting, going out on like, your responsibility. You've took that, that wife off someone. Uh, she had a father of a man. Some of them, some might not have fathers uh, around. I'm a father. If someone married my daughters and acted in this way, bro, God help them. I'd show them, okay, this is what happens, you know? I'm going to teach her respect. I'm going to teach her how to be the best woman she can be. But I expect a man to give her the life that I gave her or the morals she had. So these guys, like, 
No, we're preaching Islam. Next thing, they're jumping in pools with girls, hanging with uh, OnlyFans models yeah. and acting <coughs> degenerate. Bro, whatever you do, you do. It's up to you. But don't be pushing this agenda using Islam that way because you're mocking it. Mm, yeah. You are mocking it. The Sahaba would have slapped you and you would have cried in your space. Yeah. Bro, go to some go to Chechnya and Dagestan act like that. <laughs> Afghanistan. Go around Chechen Muslims, the ones on Deen, and just try and act in that way. They, you won't even do it. Yeah. Why, why don't these guys act like that in front of imams and uh, act like that, but they do it on the, you know? That yeah, tells you a lot about the character. It's this agenda and they're interpreting wrong and they're making Western females hate it. Islam mm. has That's a role true. for men and women, like in life. The man mm. has a role, the woman has. Woman's university, the man is the one to protect and look after her. That's it. If she can work, she can work, no problem. But the man has to say what to do, but in a nice manner where... She can't do things. You can't do the same. It doesn't mean you can't go there. I can go clubbing. No, yeah. it goes for both of you. Yeah. You can't free mix. It's a sin. Mm. Free mixing. So, you know, if you treat a woman right, Islamically, she will not, unless she's mentally insane like them, or the man's mentally insane. No, really. Why would she complain? Why would she have an issue? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about gifts. If you treat her well as a Muslim, if you're a good Muslim, you won't even shout. Yeah. You won't even be aggressive yeah. because yeah. for Allah, it's haram. Yeah, so... You wouldn't have problems. I uh, make learn from mistakes, but if you live by Islam on Deen, and both the husband and wife are on Deen and they're mm, Islamically inshallah. on point, you will not have a problem. Yeah. yeah. Period. Facts. It's a it's a proven fact. Mm. Yeah. But one, if the man's a degenerate or acting like that, bro, the woman, I'm all for her rebelling. Teach him a lesson. This is like, how are you gonna be saying I need four wives and you're running around acting like this, bro? Yeah. I also say another thing. These men go, oh, I want a virgin wife, this, that. There's a Quranic verse about marry someone the same as you. A chaste man marries a chaste woman. An unchaste man, chaste means like a, a virgin or whatever. You can't be a degenerate. Like the ones who are born Muslim, I want to say too. Running around sleeping, promiscuous, and they want, oh, I want a virgin girl from the village. No. You don't deserve it. You're a dirty monkey. Why should you? You should marry someone like you. Why don't you marry only fans, girl? What's the difference? They want to go, oh, I was a scumbag. Yeah, but when I get to marry, I want a good girl. No. If I saw a guy come to my door and he was a degenerate and he goes, yeah, but I've got it out of my system. I'll be like, no, you're dirty. <laughs> What's your past? Yeah, no, I've got a porn star for you. Go away. This is another thing I can't stand. Like, what do you mean? Mm. You have, you're have you an animal. There's no halal green pass for being doing zina. There's nothing. Oh, it's weird, but uh, in life, I'm going to do haram. And, oh, wow. So what? I'm going to go to hajj. Discipline. I'll be forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, I do everything, but I don't eat pork, bro. Like, yeah, I get drunk and do cocaine. I don't eat pork. Right? It's, 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 it's donkey world, and they're all donkeys. Mm, yeah. I, I hate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Islam is for all. There is no better man or woman. Everyone has their roles. Like, yeah. there's clear roles as it should be in the West. The man's the man, the woman's the woman. A woman is the one that raises children. Brings you. My mum, I told you, did everything. The university. The man goes out to uh, work and provide. If he cannot, she can assist. Why not? As long as this, everything's in a halal way. But you are a protector. You are an example. If you are a weak, it's like a country. If the president or prime minister is weak and a clown, the country is in disarray. Yeah. If he's an iron fist or not in such a bad way, but a good leader respected, the country is safe. Look mm. at the UAE. Yeah. There's, there's no police on the streets. Yeah, Everyone loves true, a shake. Yeah. He walks around with no security. Yeah. He's respected. So the country is safe. It's an example, I'm saying. So I think this whole, like, bro, it's a trend I don't like. Mm. And, uh, it's funny because a lot of them who you see on these mics and the way they talk, they're not like that behind the mic. Yeah. It's just like, bro, just mm. be real. You can see a mile off and uh, I respect more the kuffar guy who doesn't pretend and acts that way than the Muslim who yeah. pretends. I respect that more yeah. because he's being real. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of insecurity in front there, bro. Like, there's this one red pill quote. It's like, she's not your girl. It's just your turn. I'm just like, this is the most bizarre. And, and all, yeah. defending. I'm not for that. Like, these women, they're, do, they're making their own mistakes, these mm. uh, non-Muslim women or Muslim women. But women are very fragile also. They can be manipulated very easily. I was younger, I know. The men can play the game. I'm going to marry you. It's not their, they're going to sit Allah to the judge. But men manipulate them and use them. And then they talk like this. You, do, you can't judge a woman what she's done. Allah will judge her. We don't know that her circumstances, she's never been around a father figure. Some get manipulated, I'm going to marry you, and then they get into this, bro, it's bad, bro. And it's the man is to blame because the man is controllable. Mm. There's not, what woman's going to, uh, yeah, I've got this man possessed and he's loving me. Like, no, you've made her that way. Men have pushed that on. The men rule society. 
men control society. So mm. if the status is like this and women are becoming like it's because the man's fault. The man's soft. Mm. So I blame the man. I blame weak mm. men. I blame soft men. I blame degenerate men. And that's why women are a reflection of this. If you don't want these OnlyFans, stop subscribing. If you don't want porn, stop watching porn. Mm. You're hanging with porn stars. You're, uh, you're, uh, what's the difference? What's the difference with bikinis being flashed online? And they, well, to me, it's the same thing. Mm. Yeah. So, Tom, talk about your relationship with Andrew Tate. Many mm. people, they first saw you in that video of Andrew Tate praying. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. The first video I ever saw of Andrew <coughs> Tate being a Muslim, officially, was that video with you. And it went viral and it, you know, everyone was like, Allah work, but you know, yeah, we got yeah. a new brother in Islam. So how is your relationship with Andrew Tate and how did it start? We've known each other since 15, 16 years. When he first fought, it was on my show in Essex. He was oh. a young kid, so we know each other from the old days. A lot of us old fighters, we have a relationship. It's just networking, you stay in touch. And we'd always stay in touch online, Facebook, High Five, whatever the media was. And then when I, obviously I lived in Dubai, so it's like, I'm the Dubai go-to guy. Oh, Tam's in Dubai, let's go meet him. So people would reach out a message and we were like that in contact. Then I saw him getting everywhere. I'm like, what are you doing? We'd laugh on socials. Why are you? I'm seeing you everywhere. Where's this money coming from? And then we got close, the age gets different. And um, I remember specifically the last few years I post Islamic quotes and sayings or Abu Bakr sayings, whatever. And he'd always, you know, on Instagram you see like hearts like, he'd always like them. I'm like, that's weird. I remember at one point he was a bit dodgy. That's crazy. He's always liking these pics. And then uh, we talk and things like that, and uh, just kept in touch. And it was gonna, we said, let's do something in Dubai. Come over and we'll do some kind of events. And then uh, we got really close when he moved to Dubai. I brought him over, spending a lot of time. And uh, I remember we were talking always like Islam. And I liked the way he was, even as a non Muslim, talking about Islam, how it doesn't bend over for anyone. It tolerates, it's just, it's Islam or nothing. We don't bend our rules, we don't have gay imams, we don't. Whatever happens, we're not going to say, yeah, it's allowed. No, yeah. it's like this. I can't judge you, but Islam is black and white. If you don't do it, you're sinning. You might be homosexual, but you're still Muslim. Fix it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You might be doing zina every day. It's haram. Fix it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so then we're talking, and I know it's going to sound corny on this podcast, but when uh, we're, me, him, and Steven Seagal, and a few of us sit in a room, so that, it looks, it's a true story. We're just, and I'm doing that, we're talking to them. I see girls listening, I'm like, look, talking about, I think one of the things I said to him, which Andrew loved was, I said, look, you can go to a delivery driver, a Taliban driver, a homeless Muslim, Bangladesh, wherever. Say, here's a million dollars. On this video, denounce Islam, the prophet, peace be upon him, Allah, and just change. They won't, they won't do, do it. it. Never. You, it, you might, one might maybe do it for the money. Mm. You'll never find that. Oh. Go to any other religion, do that. Or another guy goes, slap your mum. I swear to you, you'll be sick. $10 million, just slap your mum. Not too hard, but slap her. They'll do it. I swear to you, I know guys who'll do it. That's the power of Islam. I said, and he was like, yeah, you're right. I said, listen, let's go to a masjid one day. I want to take you to a mosque to feel how it is to pray. Like prostate, big guys, small guys, champions, UFC, boxing, billionaires, poor. We all bow our heads to one creator. We're all the same, yeah? He goes, yeah, I'd love to. He goes, but gee, I want to revert anyway. He said, himself, I was looking at him going, Okay. So then we arranged it for a Saturday and it was a UFC night and I kind of like slipped my mind. We were playing that. And then he's called me, bro, what time? Like, oh yeah, we're going. He goes, I'll pick you up. Came in his famous Bugatti. We drove and we missed Isha, but it was empty. It's the masjid. So me and him and uh, cleaners, workers there who monitor the caretakers. So we did, uh, I played the two sunnah, like nothing. Because it's, the prayer's done, we're just doing two sunnah reward when you enter the masjid. I said, just, I'll do it aloud, everything from sujood to everything, because it's, it's teaching. Yeah. And they follow me. The next one I go, oh, let's do another one. I want to film it. He goes, you sure? I went, yeah. I said, you know what? You put a lot of stuff out there. It's cool, but a lot of stuff is just, put this out, it's positive. Just trust me. I want Muslims to see. If you can, the young Muslims should be ashamed that I'm praying. Film there, this, that. And he had this, wallah, he had nur in his face. You can, I can read people, bro. I used to fight as living. I, I was a street guy. I can look in someone's eyes, they're scared, if they're lying. I've got this thing, I just look in the eyes, I can tell how they are, I, I can stare into them. Just I like, learned this. He had this nur, like we were doing, I was doing that, we were talking about stories. But it wasn't doubt, it wasn't just the beauty of Islam, I wasn't dissing Christianity, I was just talking. And one guy just joined in, dissing Christianity, I said, bro, stop. Which kind of put him off, like, stop dissing other religions, yeah. we don't need to. Just let's promote what we've got. We don't need to diss anything, it's not loud. And I was happy, so we just left. And we're driving to UFC and we're just having a nice, comp not UFC, to a, like a chicken spot to watch UFC. 
and uh, I'm sitting with him. And I remember I'm sitting right next to him. We have like some fried chicken for chips. Tristan comes in his white suit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chicken sort of Tristan like James Bond. And uh, I look and I'm um, like, it's a very high race. I go, look, I'm doing it. He goes, all right. And I was boom. I said to him, and then it's, it went, it just went berserk. And then, uh, yeah. So I, I don't know, Allah uh, brought him to Islam. No one else is Allah's uh, will. And then, let me say one thing clearly about Andrew as well. May I get calls 24 7 to meet him, do business, this, that, this, that, billionaire, this, that. Never goes. Every time Islamic society called us or to go to a class, I swear, without a second, he goes, what time? Let's go. Yeah. Well, I'm not lying. Yeah, I'm telling you. So there's other videos. There's, we've never posted it. There's one come out about a Hajj tour. There's one about going to a revert center. He went and walked around. All the, everyone was like that. Um, even recently, he goes, bro, I can't wait to be back. I missed going Juma with you. He said, well, I, he said it himself. I didn't even ask him. But even Juma, some khutbas, bro, had to. In the car. It was a car park speaker. I couldn't get out because, bro, he got mobbed. Like, he's not much. We're sitting there and everyone's like this. <laughs> it's just, I feel uncomfortable for him, you know? Yeah. We get in and get out of the car and it's just mobs. Mobs. Bro, I've been around everyone from Abi, Mayweather, Van Damme, you name it. I've never seen, maybe Cristiano gets that, yeah? Or Michael Jackson, for sure. Yeah. But I've never seen reactions like when he, I'm out with him. It's crazy. We nearly crashed, bro. I mean, his car, everyone reckons that car. People coming out of windows, driving on Dubai, like trying to film. I'm, he's like, what are you doing? It's mad, bro. I know, bro. Yeah, so, and then, yeah, and then, unfortunately, he got jailed weeks after. So people say, why is he saying this? Why is he not practicing? Bro, he did shahada, what, reverted a few weeks, then he's in jail in Romania around lowest Muslims. What do you, ex like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Who do you want him to be? Sheikh bin Baz? It's not going to happen. <laughs> the guy has got the biggest calamity of his life. He just reverted, and he's trying his best. It's, bro, I'm not perfect. I've been born Muslim. Yeah, 42 years. But one thing I want to make clear, the impact he had for this, the Muslim revolution, I'll call it, was massive. It'll be historic. We're not talking about that him coming out and doing that, his promotion of Islam. Bro, I'm telling you on a daily basis, I'm not going to say to show off how many people revert or message me and DM me because of him. Bro, it's insane. Well, I mean, we've seen it. Every single person who came on our podcast to take shahada or tell their story mentioned entertaining in some regard. So there you go. So you're telling me Allah's not rewards, inshallah. What that he came for a reason. Allah, that guy was there for a reason, and I'm not going out. People say, Oh, what do you mean? Allah? Allah does everything, but that man role is such a reason for this massive wave of this power of Islam from influencers <laughs> to celebs to this young generation of boys. I'm telling you, and it's strong as a Malcolm X came in those days, it was different paths, yeah. But that impact through social media has been influenced. So, whatever anyone says, you've got to be say Alhamdulillah for. Put in Islam, whatever you say, in the minds of millions. Mm. And people don't f remember that. They'll just say, he does this, he's got a cigar there, the old video of this, car, women, whatever. I like up to this. You can't measure what he's done because he's, bro, his circumstances. But every time on Candice Owen, Patrick Bed David, BBC, Tucker Carlson, Islam. Islam, yeah. yeah. Who does that? My Muslims are scared to promote Islam. Yeah, Muslims nice. are scared. So I'll always defend him for that. And what his message is, is powerful, bro. And if it wasn't for him, hundreds and thousands would have been Muslim. So he has done a major, major thing. And we were coming from a stage where you guys were younger than me. The last 10, 15 years, it was this atheism thing was ruling. Yeah. Even Muslims are acting on like, no, I don't know. Now Islam's like everyone wants to be Muslim. Everyone's like, I'm a Muslim, I'm a ripper, I'm a Muslim, Islam. Yeah. It's come with a bang. Bro, tell me if it wasn't for Andrew Tate, who brought that back? Yeah, and also the, the hardest demographic. I was talking to a Sunnah guy uh, when he came to visit in Canada, and he mentioned the hardest demographic to reach for Islam are like young white men. Well, always the hardest. Yeah, yeah, the most difficult to reach. And they, those like white, young <coughs> white men especially are like, a lot of them are the propagators of the new age atheism and that stuff. Like yeah. Richard Dawkins is an older guy, but he's a white guy. Sam Harris, like these guys, they were the ones pushing this narrative. So all of a sudden, Andrew Tate comes out, he accepts Islam, talks about it, and then boom, all these young men, the hardest demographic, all of a sudden, like turn almost overnight. Yeah, I'm gonna say, how can Muslims out there talk and dis go against him? I see people on Twitter. How are you not gonna defend a brother? Do you not see the calamity he's going through? He's literally three weeks Muslim and he went to jail. Yeah. Three weeks. Now he's in Romania. Who's he around? 
It's not Scotland. There's no one to let. It's Romania. Yeah. Bro, we are our whole life. I know Muslims 50 years old still can't practice. Yeah. Still don't know anything about Islam. You know what I mean? So, all you out there talking rubbish and judging, don't forget that the one who does that is on them calling him non Muslim or going against him. If it wasn't for him, this movement wouldn't be there. And I'll clearly say it, and anyone else who debate me on it can debate me all day. There's millions of Dawah guys, but he has influence more than all of them combined. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're all coming to these guys. And they'll talk bad about him, but they're all still using clickbait in all their videos. These Dawah guys. Yeah, that's Andrew Dates, why, hold on. why use the name? Yeah. If I don't like someone, do you think I'm going to do a podcast on pedophilia or homosexual guys or LGBTQ? I don't care of it. I don't accept it or acknowledge it. I won't promote it. So stop using him as clickbait. Accept it and say, Alham Alhamdulillah, this guy helped a lot. Let's help him, support him, whatever the case, pre-Islam, whatever the case, call us, yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, if you're not, then you're not a true Muslim. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point because something they don't realize is he actually has a right over us. He has a right, especially in his situation, he's locked up, he's in jail. Mm -hmm. he, you know, the only defense he has right now is his legal team. 100% bro. Like we have, he has a right over us. We have an amana to defend him as a brother in Islam, especially like for what he's done, how new of a Muslim he was. There are some stories of some Sahaba, like for example, one Sahabi, and there are many narrations about this. He would drink repetitively in public and he would be lashed, logged many times in front of the Prophet I, I don't know what, which Sahabi it was, but one Sahabi was like, uh, basically cursed him. He's like, what's wrong with you? Do you not have shame? You're doing this in front of the Prophet every single day? Mm. The Prophet said, don't talk to him like that. Don't help shaitan against him. You know, all these people, they're helping shaitan against Andrew Tate. And he's a strong-minded guy, may Allah bless him. So I don't really have a fear that he'll leave He's a strong-minded guy, but also it, it's, it takes its toll, bro. Anyone, mm, you've come to yeah. a deen, you defend it, and the people, Muslims going against you, come on. Yeah. I'm ashamed. All those Muslims doing this, is that camera on? Or this one? Oh, be ashamed, oh. be ashamed of yourself. You're, you're, it's a shameful behavior. Yeah. And I would defend, I'll even defend his brother, the way he speaks about Islam highly. Yeah. No one can understand. These guys came from nothing, bro. The father was around, but they were also striving for themselves and to find Islam. The guys are multimillionaire, has the yeah. women, what people yeah. say, the money, the cars, the fame. Yeah. Still came to Islam. What does he need it for? People say he's paid for. What paid to be Muslim? How's holding a Quran, going to a Romanian court, an Orthodox Christian country, going to help you win a case? That's going to make you lose a case. He yeah. still did that proudly. So, bro, stop the BS. All these guys, I don't care if they hate me. I get hate all day on Twitter. I'll, I really, I'm blessed. He's a brother. I'll always defend him. And uh, I really believe his influence of what he did was monumental in the next generation of Islam. And I truly believe you can laugh but you'll remember that it, it, it was it was such a monumental move yeah. to the point where bro, I see people like Patrick Bet David one day I see a lot of people taking note yeah. these sneakers these guys all came from him his influence very, so yeah. Yeah. you know Yo, this honestly this actually clears a lot of things up because uh, Father and I we were in Mecca you know doing Umrah a few days ago and we met a brother out there and he was saying that he saw the video that Andrew Tate did where he was with Tristan, they put a toilet, and they were reenacting what it was like to be in jail for yeah, 24, 24 hours. hours. And he said that the one thing that was concerning to him is that in the entire video, Andrew didn't pray once. And when I heard that, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna you lie. Seen was, video, right? was you haven't seen the video, I've never seen it. Yeah, right? so I've never seen the video. But when you're putting it like that, it puts it all into perspective. Like, damn, it was only like that short amount of time before he actually went to yeah, jail. I know, people, brother. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You're born with, Alhamdulillah, uh, you've been raised well. I can, I don't want to embarrass people. I know thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around. I will pray, I'll leave a room and go and pray, they'll just sit there. Muslims, mm. who don't fast, born Muslims, yeah. no Islam. South Asian culture, born, raised, no Islam, they don't pray. Yeah. You're, uh, we're talking about a guy who's come from the extremes mm -hmm. of non-Islam. Yeah. Three weeks, never learned to pray. He, was, he didn't understand, he doesn't even know yeah. who, where. He's, he's a convert too, so it took you time, didn't it? Yeah, no, bro, it took me... It took only that time, bro, to understand Islam and being in jail. Try and do it yeah. in a Christian Orthodox country, in jail, weeks oh. after, you don't know what's going on with your life, no communication, mm. and then you're out in house arrest, all around, there's no mm. Muslims around. Exactly. Bro, Allah will judge everyone accordingly, and Allah knows that you people don't understand. Muslims themselves who know Islam don't pray. Sisters don't cover. Muslims drink alcohol, go clubbing, who are born, raised no better, and they're trying to judge him on this. Bro, 
worry about our own houses. I mm. used to miss a lot of prayers. Do you know what this hadith is about th three Jummahs intentionally being missed in a row? What does it say? It takes you out of the realm of Islam, you know? Yeah. And what's the first question we'll be asked for on the Salah. 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 I tell Muslims that. You know better. You intentionally miss it. Oh, I need to eat. I'm bodyboarding. What? Ramadan. I'm j I need my gym. Imagine. I know athletes who would not fast during camps for a fight. Wow. Wow. Because wow. the fight meant more. When you got brothers like Khabib goes, I'm not going to have a fight during Ramadan. Mm. Guys, that meant more to them than Islam. Imagine. I'm sorry, but it's, it's shocking to me. Yeah. And they're going to go, of course, bro, teach me, teach me how to make a plane. Yeah? Tell me about it in a day, and then three weeks later, you leave me in the class. I'm going to be like, all right, I don't know what to do. Uh, look, the course is finished, done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't learn even by reading the Quran how to pray. Can you? It's the Hadith. We know it. We, you can't learn how to pray just having the Quran. How would he know? And then obviously, the stress, it, Allah knows accordingly. So these people, bro, people expect him to revert, be Malcolm X, be Mufti Mink in one day. It does not happen. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane, man. It's insane. You cannot, everyone's going to be judged accordingly. You are your circle. You're around good brothers. You're all together. Who is he around? Killers? Guards? In a, what are you going to see? Mm. Yeah. That's facts. If you're raised in a street, it's like poverty. People blame more Hispanic community or black. No, if you're going to put a community in a ghetto with no financial freedom in projects, what do you expect they're going to do? Crime will mm -hmm. happen. They need to survive. Yeah. Put them in Fisher Island in Miami. Put them in Hampstead Heath, London. Mm. Then see how they behave. Yeah. It's, a, it's social experiments. So people don't think outside the box and like, judge, put yourself in his shoes. Learn Judaism, stuff for a lot. Mm. But I'm saying in three weeks. Traveling and just go, go. Tell me, <laughs> you won't even have to ask the five questions. Yeah. I want you all to take this in that it's almost been a year since that video came out. That's so time oh flies. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, this being said, what would some of your advice be to your younger self with Surah Al Asr? So, Rami, do you want to quickly go over what Surah Al Asr means? Surah Asr. Yeah. Um, the, the recitation? Yeah, or? recitation okay. and just a quick translation. Audhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Bismillah rahman rahim Wal Asr. Allah says in the Quran, he swears by time. And Asr is not just time, it's time that's running out. Mm. So he swears by time that's running out. He says, indeed, mankind is in loss. He says, except those who believe and do good deeds and call each other, exalt each other to the truth and exalt each other towards patience. Alhamdulillah. So what message do you have to young men on using this limited time that's always running out? Well, I just bet yourself. First things first, Salah, get in check, please pray. Whatever you do, you must be regularly praying because when you pray regularly, you'll stop other sins. Believe me, when you're about to prosper, you're not going to think of, oh, I want to see this woman or this because I've got to face Allah. The next few hours, like, it helps. I'm telling you, that's one of the tricks too. So read about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Read about the Sunnahs and how to behave. Be good to your parents. Please, they're limited time. Just look after the ones who brought you to this earth. Be good to everyone. This is very important. I made these mistakes, neglecting and doing my thing, being selfish. And just honestly, follow the footsteps of the Sahaba and the Prophet and the Sunnah because it's very important. We're limited. Be a good role model. Do sadaqah. Look after those less fortunate. Even if it's a small a day, five dirhams, one quarter, give. Bro, this money's not ours, it means nothing, yeah? But honestly, everything stems from Salah. I can't explain. Get that in check, pray, and understand what you're saying when you pray. Every Juma, read Surah al -Kaf, read about the cave, read the story. Beautiful stories people even neglect, don't know about, you know? And then, for, like, speak to guys who are in the Dawah game, watch videos. Some of these brothers are good online, YouTube. Watch them, just watch debates. Just... My knowledge comes from watching debates. I watch a lot of debates, oh, I never knew that, this, about everything. But honestly, when you pray regularly, when you cleanse your sins, when you do what you do, when you're praying, you're sitting there, go to masjids as much as you can, be around good brothers. My, my biggest advice would be stay around a good circle of people. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, your network's your net worth, but do that Islamically. Mm, because yeah. believe me, um, that's very important. You need a good circle who are supportive. I want... Do you know how you judge your friends? Yeah, it's a tip to all the brothers out there. 
God forbid you die tomorrow, you got a wife and kids, and they're homeless. They have to live with a friend of yours. You need a friend they live with who won't even look up at them. I've got many friends like that. I know if I'd gone, they could live, my wife and kids would live there. That brother would not even look at them, my wife in a certain way. Mm. And he'd say, here's your freedom, and, uh, here's your house, here's this, and bye. But how many guys watching this can do that with their friends? Huh? After five, six, how many? Yeah. That's how you church it's test a friend, bro. Test them. That's when you know, oh, is he on Dean or not? Then they'll be like, oh, I don't know, you know? Yeah, I feel shy. He looks a bit like this. He's a bit of shape. He's a bit of a... Then uh, he's not a friend, is he? Yeah. That's how you judge. So, honestly, the basics, bro, of Islam. Let's not become scholars. None of us. <laughs> Get to the basics, pray. Follow the five players. Follow all the requirements and just be a good person and just sabr, like you said, patience. Don't, mm. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And learn slowly, step by step. And... Live by Islamic values. Don't sell out for money. Don't use riba. Don't use uh, some of these scams to make money when it's a haram. Don't. I've got offered untold amount of money for gambling companies to sponsor events or mm. when I used to do box events, alcohol. You much? How much FNB sells or other things? Yeah. I say I don't care, but a lot of people say it's the easy way out. It doesn't matter. I know what's set for me, and whatever is going to come to me, whatever I do will come for me. You know what I'm saying? Whatever was mm. come for come. Allah knows best. So. Work as much as you can, but this dunya is, uh, is limited. That's why, even with you guys, I always have a time I want to spend with my kids. Because, bro, like, why am I going to neglect that? To chase what? I need to spend time with them at this age, you know? In the older generation, a lot of the dads didn't do that. That's one of the flaws. They'd be like, work hard, hard, come back, bad, stare at the kids, long nights and days. Mm. That's not life, bro. We're not here to sit there running to pay a mortgage your whole life. This, what's this stupid life they do? Yeah. Whatever you can be, don't mean. If you have to rent your whole life, rent. That's the way it's meant to be. But my mm. point is, uh, my biggest thing is, please, at least pray regularly. Start step by step because once you pray regularly, you'll, if you've got a brain, 90% of you will stop the degeneracy because, mm. yeah, you're not going to pray in my group and then go out and do something stupid and Isha's coming. Or you're not going to be in an all night Isha and then Fudge is coming. You're going to be like, oh, yeah. stuff. Like, you feel shame. I used to feel shame. Mm. Why did I do that? Oh, I don't got to pray. And, Beg for forgiveness. But then slowly, slowly, the more regularly pray, the more regularly God will do, you'll stop these other silly things. And I don't want to say on camera, men's biggest weakness. Yeah. And it's said, zina, nikah is easier than zina. It's simple. Mm. If you got it, it's just bro, married. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. But marry. So that's my thing. The rest of the things you can control. See, one of the things, Tam, that Allah makes an obligation upon men in Islam is to be a protector over your women folk. Mm. So a lot of brothers, unfortunately, they think you got to be so pious that you just let go of the dunya, you let go of wanting to make money, getting strong and all that. So what advice would you have for brothers to get on being stronger and being that protector that Allah wants them to be? Oh, of course. Look, to all those brothers out there, if you're a wife, do you want your wife sitting there struggling to eat food or good food or kids not to have their uniform or like... You want to buy them the little dresses or toys. Earn. Why are we earn? So they've secured. So when you go, they have something there. You know, what's, as a man, God forbid I die tomorrow. Imagine they have no shelter or nothing. You know, you don't know. To look after parents who are retired. You have to work. You have to provide. You're a man. Provide. You can live well if you like certain things. By all means, as long as you're still living humbly, you can be successful and do what you want to do, but you have to work. I work hard a lot, but your price, it works around my salah, family, but I still put those long hours in because look, in a day, there's priorities in life, but if I don't do that, I can't enjoy that time with my kids so much if I don't work hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or do things and you want to take them to travel. Why not? You can travel the world, see the world. It opens your mind. Uh, if you're blessed to do so, do so. If you're not... Like, as men, so like you, you don't want to see your wife struggling, working long shifts also support you. Yeah. No man wants that. And I, I respect everyone who does that, and everyone has their own situation, so I don't mean in a bad way, but do what you can to survive. And also to the sisters out there, be humble too. Don't, we don't, you don't need a DiCaprio or a, a Tate or a, uh, this, that, Chanel, but you don't need. Don't put pressure on the husbands as well. They need the handbags, this car, the Range Rover, no. Whatever his means are, support him, maybe mm. soldier. If she, he can only afford Nando's for a super date night, yeah. so be it. Why do you have to go to Zuma? So mm. also, they have to stop watching these Kardashians and TV shows. I think, I expect that. I want the bag. 
they have their role as well. Be, whatever he can provide, respect him. If you make your husband feel like a man, oh, thank you for that. I swear, Oof. his pride, he'll leave and yeah. go, yes, and give you everything. If you yeah. demoralize him, go, you know, but my friend has this and I saw that and I'd love to do this. I'd love to go here one day. It might not be in his means. Respect mm. him. He's going out of his way. Be humble. There's no meme. Be humble like your mothers were. Yeah. yeah. That generation, dads have nothing, bro. Came and worked hard. A lot of us are immigrants, you know? Parents of, our parents were immigrants in the country. So be humble. It comes to you. But the women have to also show that support as well. I don't have that moody face. Uh, sisters have to do that. Like, smile. If he comes with just an apple, yeah, just an apple as a gift one day, that's the best up on earth. If he can give you better, let him so, if he's got the means. That's the problem. So the men feel the pressure seeing other couples and they show off and again, choose your friends. You'll see, have your wife with the right friends or another wife's got this, another husband mm. got, we went to uh, Hawaii and then I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking about buying this uh, Rolls Royce for her. Mm. And obviously, everyone's got that inside them, the wives that this, husband feels demoralized. Choose your friends wisely. But everyone's got a part to play. Make the man feel like, uh, in a way, a king, and he'll make you feel like a queen. Believe me, yeah. mm. he'll leave like, <clears throat> even if it's a janitor, you know what? She appreciates me, made that sound, well, okay, khalas, mm. ah, I'm gonna do this. But if, if you're gonna be like, demine, demean him and make him feel like rubbish, then of course, it reflects, it's a domino mm. effect. So everyone's got their part to play, and I think people are too influenced by social media, Kardashians, Dan Bilzerian, all this. Bling, bling, blah, blah, blah. And uh, a real woman wouldn't care. And a real man wouldn't care. They'll be happy with whatever it is. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. I think one of the, the things a lot of people nowadays suffer from is individualism. Mm. Like when they look for a partner to get married, they're looking for everything they want in the partner, but they're not thinking what their partner wa might want in them. A lot of young men, you know, they'll, they'll write this, uh, this. We hear this a lot back in the day. You write a list of everything you want. Oh. Things that are negotiable, things that are absolute, all, all these things they want but they will never write a list of what they need to do and what they need to be able to provide. Like, what, what do they you need bring to, to the table? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of the time, like the men will ask a woman, like, what do you bring to the table? And it's a whole stupid discussion. And it's never flipped back on the man. Yeah. And a cook? lot of the time. How many meals can you cook? This, that. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah. A lot of the time when it is flipped back on them, they end up looking stupid. Mm. A lot of the, it's like, even if he's a billionaire, it's like, can you give me love? Can you give me emotional, uh, mm. emotional empathy? Can you give me a connection? You know, can you, can you as a man, raise the children alongside me in a way that is proficient, a way that's good, a way that's Islamic? Or can mm. you lead this family in a way that's Islamic? You know, how many guys can you actually genuinely do that or even believe that they can? That's my point. Again, when it goes back to what I said earlier, I need a virgin, I need this, like that. But he's a degenerate. Yeah. I see it a lot in the Asian community, bro. My sister was getting mad. Monkeys were coming to see her and uh, <laughs> I test them because like, they knew me. You know, yeah, tell I, just, I see, yeah, where'd you go out, you know? <laughs> Try to impress me from the street, and I get out. I go, you're a monkey. Get out, you know. <laughs> Why are you gonna go, with a woman who's on dean practicing? She covers, and you're gonna act like that. Who are you? Marry your own. So do these, all these brothers out there, I'm telling the sisters, don't settle for these scumbags who think they can run around. He was popular here. That's disgusting. You want a man who's been everywhere? Say, put it on him. Why should sisters marry men who've been everywhere? And when I'm settled down, I have a virgin girl from back home. Like, bro, no. Sorry, mm. I don't like that. You have. It's, you have to play the part. You have to be an, uh, an example too. There's no respect there. And uh, that's a big problem in the Asian communities. These girls get stuck with these guys and they act like, yeah, I do this, I do, I'm a grafter. Grafter means drug dealer, I do this, that. And uh, the poor woman's come from an innocent family, looked after, stuck in a house so that he's out partying. He treats her like a refugee. He goes out, has his little girlfriends, comes back, shouts, cook clean, doesn't give her anything. So obviously she's gonna be depressed. Oh, my mm. wife doesn't look after me. I'm gonna, I need her because she, because you're a clown. Mm. She don't look after you because you're a donkey. So it goes back to that. Men, women are a reflection of men. Facts. It's how it was. Society. Men, men rule society from history. So all these kind of LGBTQ. This. It's the men who bring this. All yeah. oh, women starts laws. Oh, it's the Me Too. No, men started the Me Too. Men started everything. Then they complain. It's just like so. Men fix up. It's like, yo, this girl's this only fans and these podcasts and they sit there. They'll sit on a podcast with 10 strippers yeah. and this women. There's, there's podcasts where they're just women naked sitting there and they'll diss them. Why are you sitting with them? Yeah. <laughs> You're arguing with those types of girls. Yeah. Yeah. It's like me saying I don't like homosexuality. Like, it's not that I hate. I don't agree with it. It's not allowed. It's haram. I'm not going to sit in a room with 10 guys 
in leather strap, like leather outfits, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and balls in their mouth, and it's like you know, <laughs> and gimp mount outfits. And I'll be like, yeah, I don't like you guys. You're scum. Why am I there? Yeah, it makes me laugh, bro. Mm. You could never get me to sit in like a homosexual porn set. Mm. You could never just to debate them. Why would I be there? Yeah. No. So these guys make me laugh. They're hanging with them. Yo, you're an OnlyFans. Why? Are you, like, it's just it's just content BS. It's, it's, I don't get it. It's just a clown world right now. I can't. I hate social media to a point where. I'm only there for business and certain messages. And really, one day I just want to delete it. Oh, I hate just seeing some things, bro. It's corny. And I, I want to react and I know I'll get banned, so I just leave it. Mm. Yeah. We were actually talking recently about how the stuff that does the best online is all the negative stuff. Anytime there's a bashing or like, even the title, like the worst experience I've ever had, people are so obsessed with hearing about negative experiences, seeing someone debate and like refute and smash somebody else. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty nasty, to be honest. It's just about it's losers and... Uh... Again, all those people out there, don't take it too serious. I've been around the YouTubers, the biggest influencers. Everything you see is for content. 99% uh -huh. is fake. The pranks, the little fight, it's all arranged. People don't understand. It's, it's, that's, it's, it's all arranged. Yeah. And it's you know, fake. Yeah, something personal about us, subhanAllah. Like, there, I think there was a point in, in, in our podcast where we were a little too focused on the content, the clicks and, and the views and all that stuff. And I swear those are like the worst months for our podcast, for us as individuals, for the podcast as a whole. Literally, I'm telling you, as soon as we sat down, we're like, we need to cut all this garbage out. We need to reflect. We need to fix ourselves. We're doing this for the sake of Allah. I swear to God, literally within a week, Shooter hit us up, you know, to get us to, to come to Dubai to help out with that. And then set up, we set up literally like seven podcasts with, with you, with Ahmed, with, with Muhammad and Delusi, with Jewel, with Dylan Man, with so many people. May Allah bless them, all of them. Alhamdulillah, like it's, it's such a blessing when you have the right intention, you do things for the sake of Allah, mm. Allah will yeah. open those doors, man. 100%. Alhamdulillah. But the thing is, uh, but these kids, uh, they think it's cool. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of kids who are very easily uh, influenced and uh, don't be because uh, I'm telling you all there, 99% are clowns and dorks and uh, they're scared of their own shadows. Don't believe the hype. I swear, do not believe it. It's all fake. Yeah. I've been yeah. there, I've seen it. I don't want to expose anyone's haram, but... Yeah, don't but, get impressed guys yeah but that's why it's more it's so important to have uh, people like you are saying this message yeah I, I really think you should keep promoting this stuff inshallah. i know you don't like yeah, a lot of social yeah. media but i think you should keep promoting it because we need tam cons we need yeah. entertainers. we need people who are going to be like you know men look in the mirror we don't yeah. have that nowadays yeah i always say i even tweet a lot of it i know a lot of them don't like it but <laughs> they don't call me but it's fact like <laughs> this woman hating is embarrassing i can't deal with it like you're judging women on a few skanks but women can judge men on millions of skanks. Bro, mm. like I said, we they are a reflection of you. If your yeah. wife is bad, you're the man. Bro, women are timid. Unless it's Ronda Rousey or some beast. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, all these brothers also from the older generation, treat your wives well, be nice, be soft. And then you'll see a happiness in your marriage. Why you come over, you cook this? Uh, like, mm -hmm. okay, but, bro, those old wannabes, it's just... Bro, with time you realize, and we have roles who, like, there's no such thing. We're not kings. Well, who are we? Mm. And uh, again, if you've got daughters, would you like you to be a man like you to be married to your daughter? Look at it that way. Or your sister. That's how you judge it. You pray your sister, but you treat these other women like that. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, mate, I've done stupid things in my life. Like, when I was younger, I regret and sinful. But then you've got to think like that. And then I'll attest you, give me two daughters. So now I have to be an example. So when they look for a husband, mm. say, ah, I need someone like my father. I'm nowhere near it. like him. This is what a man was. Yeah. yeah. So that's the example. And a lot of you men, you claim you're men. If you call yourself alpha, mm. you're borderline yeah, no. homosexual. You're, you're borderline yeah, yeah. homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Put that as a uh, snippet. If you call yourself alpha or you refer to yourself as a big man, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a boss, bro. Please go home and sleep. It's just embarrassing, bro. <laughs> it is embarrassing. See, like last, last night, bro, we were talking about this right before bed, that women are mirrors to ourselves. They're a reflection of us. There's a companion for the living out of the Prophet ﷺ, and he mentioned that if I disobey Allah, I find the effects of it in the behavior of my wife or the camel that I ride. I, I said at the beginning, if you live Islamically, mm. you and your wife, there'll be no problems. So. Because as a man, you can't react in a certain way. Mm. Everything will be perfect. So right. we, the wife has to look at herself too. Have an Islamic household where you know what the uh, limits are, what's allowed, what's not. There'll be no problems. We all felt like, bro, I make mistakes. 
people think oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm far from perfect. I I have a temper. I'm complacent. Sometimes I can just sit there. I can be. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm like this. I can just lock out and not. I'm just like boom. I can sit in a room alone for like two days and just. I don't need. To, I'm like this. Mm. But it is what it is. But you have to be an example because uh, again, just imagine it's your sister or daughter or your mother. You know. That's how you got to look at things and. Uh, it takes maturity to do that. I know it's hard for young guys and society's uh, distractions, but wake up, man. Sort of question. Why do you think men nowadays are so easily influenced? I think it's, it's a weakness. It's not, men are not men like the old days, bro. This new generation, like, just because they tweet these things doesn't mean they're a man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Go to these other countries, that men are fighting wars. Men are walking miles a day just to uh, fend for their families in mm. Palestine, Syria, Iraq. That's a man. Hands are like grovel. Like, I mean, what men? Like, oh, it's cold. Put the heater on or <laughs> I've got a cold or flu and get sniffets out and gets his hot water bottle. Is that a man? <laughs> Is that a man? I'm just saying. Do you think the Sahaba and Mujahideen used to do that? No. Um, bro, I'm telling you right now, when I saw the swords in museums, I don't think I could lift one. Really? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like heavy. a man's right wow. this close with a sword, one on one. What would you would you do? you'd be like? Oh. Yeah. If I brought yeah. Hamza Chimaev in here now and he grabbed you, you'd all get scared. Yeah. Let's not lie. Let alone in a battle, swords are flying. So what's this man? There's always men are influenced because they're not men. Men like be. I was raised in a non-Muslim country. I was the only Muslim and Asian in my whole school and area. I never drank alcohol. I never touched a drug, and I was always proud of being Muslim. Why? Because I was raised that way. And mum taught me, we are, be proud of Islam, what we are. So it starts from a family and so, but you guys who are Muslim, like, wake up. If you're influenced by a dork on a streaming platform or a YouTube or a pop, like, and it's negative, then you're the clown too. You, you like, uh, you can't influence me. Dan Bilzerian could never influence me. I just like rap, Tupac can't influence I'm not going to wear a red bandana and start walking around with a fake gun. Like, like a blood in a car. I won't, I like to think, but you don't influence me. So mm -hmm. my point is, as men, like, wake up. Like, you diss the women following Kim Kardashian, but you're just the same following these guys. Be individual, be, f be influenced by what Allah sent to us. Influenced by a real man, like the Prophet, peace be upon him all. Sahaba, so even people like Malcolm X, watch guys who did stuff. Even to an extent, Muhammad Ali, look how brave he was, what he was doing at his time. Spreading Islam when people get lynched for being black. Mm, Guys nowadays wow. are scared to pray Outside. in case they miss a meeting or they're mm. missing a nightlife. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. He would have got hung on trees, black people, getting hung on trees when he was around. SubhanAllah. Do you know what I mean? That's, f bro, these guys were real. So look at it as that. If you want to be a warrior, follow the mm. real examples. And that means you'll be a better person. And if it means you lose friends, they're not your friends. Mm. That's a great point. That's a great point. And you spoke about the Sahaba, how they were capable, they were strongly fought wars. Men nowadays, you said, I don't know if we were recording, but you said, you don't, we don't need that nowadays. Mm. You know, like it's, we live in a very, yeah, look, world. there's different kinds of like, I mean, be an example. Like, I rate a man who fends for his family and respects him as a soft and an example. Where everyone loves him and respects him because that man, how many men do you know you could leave a million dollars if you had it in his house and come back 10 months is there? Think like a trustworthy man. Like I said, where your wife came around, if you, God forbid, something happened or they look after your family. That kind of man you need to be. That's a man. Yeah. I don't know, like, come on, like, I don't care about a man who's got 10 girls in bikinis slapping their bums, smoking weed. Bro, for me, it's embarrassing. You are like a porn star. Same equivalent for me. Yeah. You're just mm. a general. I know it's culture pushes that, but it's embarrassing. And uh, would you like your daughter twerking with a bikini? Just well, think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the exact thing that the Prophet said to one Sahabi, where he, uh, one guy, he went to the Prophet, he's a young man, he's like, let me commit zina. He's like, I want to, I want to do haram. Let me do it. Prophet Sam said, like, what about your mom? What about your sister? You know, could you imagine that for them? And then he basically he understood. He walked away. Alhamdulillah. So, back to the, the the Sahaba and their strength and men nowadays. You train MMA, Allahumma barik. You have a lot of, you know, you said you're training killers here. Alhamdulillah, not in literally, but literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah Susan's Alhamdulillah. Going to watch us <laughs> too. Alhamdulillah. Um, do you? Do you encourage all men to train MMA or to, to learn how to fight? Yeah, no. I just think it gives you a discipline, martial art. It's good to know society is so messed up now, you don't know what happens. But I don't, I don't think 
go out there, fight, do roly poly, jump out of bushes and pull up a knife. No, like, <laughs> if you've got time, learn it. Be physically fit is good. Healthy for your kids. But if that means walking every day, walk. Bro, yeah. everyone's talking like, you must learn some martial art. Bro, when's a ninja going to come through my window? And if he comes with a knife, what am I going to do? <laughs> I think it's a sport and I like it. But you don't need to. I respect a man who's a doctor working all day. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have the time. But just be an example. It doesn't... Being a man doesn't mean being physically strong or learning a martial art like, yeah, I'm doing MMA, bro. Still half the time, if I say boo, they'll jump some guys. Like, it doesn't yeah. mean that they can train. Some are technically better. It doesn't mean that. I think just be... Honestly, I respect a man who's honorable more. But... Your health is good. It's important. Don't be over. Don't be overeating or obese, unhealthy. You got a family. Be an example. Discipline. It comes down to discipline. But I see guys who train who work on eight packs, condition, have these prep meals, all this, and they can't still pray five times a day. Oh, subhanallah. I used to, bro. I myself, I used to miss fajr, but I'd wake up to watch a Mike Tyson fight UFC. The time difference: six in the morning, five in the morning. And once I felt stuff for a lot, I'm waking up to watch guys fight. Yeah. Excited, but I'd miss Fajr. Wow. Bro, this reminds me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'm open. This is my biggest flaw. I was like, how lazy am I? Yeah. Guys will do prep meals. I'm this much. Wait, I can't eat that. No, I can't have that sauce because it's going to go to my carbs and like this. Bro, you're not praying. You miss a fight. Mm. What's your priority? So no. Train. Learn a martial art. It's good to know. But bro, very rarely you're going to get a guy come out of the bush and attack you and go, Hi, oh, let's fight. One on one duel. Just know how to defend you if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. There's, what's this pressure that everyone has to learn a martial art and be a tough guy? Yeah. Who's brought this pressure, this Red Hill thing? Train, do this. Are you sitting at home? Are you watching Netflix all day? If you want to watch Netflix with your wife, you can watch Netflix with your wife. Yeah. Who cares? Just be an example. Where's this come from? Like, where's it come from? I know yeah. guys don't even train who beat up most guys. <laughs> I think for, I can't speak for many. I can speak for myself though. Um, I, I was abused as a kid, mm. and you know, it's being in that predicament made me want to always come off as either tough or someone that someone else wouldn't mess with. Part of the reason why I got tattoos at the time, why I started learning fighting and all that. But it's like over time, as you said, you realize it's kind of it's kind of unnecessary to do these things. It's good to have it, and not need it. Look, but it's not a necessity. Do it if it's a hobby. Keep fit. Some people want to play paddle. Some people cricket. Some people 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 play football. Some want to work. No problem. It's your it's your uh, whatever you like. Do. Well, there's no thing you must do that. Like uh, women do self defense, bro. What woman's gonna stop a man from a, a stuff like attacking her? What? One in a million, like cyborg. Yeah. Who? Yeah. When he comes, punch there, in the eye, bro. You saw the Hulk. That black brother, yeah, African, yeah, bro, stuff like he probably rape us, <laughs> stuff for a lot, yeah. <laughs> joke, when you see his hands, it's bigger than my head. But my point is, <laughs> like this, you must fight, you must be. What we're we ready for, bro? This, like this movement, like I laugh. Andrew Tate comes from fighting background. He is a fighter. That's how I know him and his brother. But you get these guys sitting and go, yeah, Andrew told me that. They're sitting there with this like little nerdy guys. Yeah, I'm gonna dim out. Bro, what are you going to do? I know road men, black guys, my friends in London, brothers from the street who all slap them, never done a martial arts class in their life. Mm. They don't care. I'm telling you, it doesn't mean anything. Like, do it for you. Don't be a sheep. Andrew, these guys have their own ways of doing things and he's incorporating discipline. I like, I know what he's doing. He's saying, don't be a tough guy, be disciplined. If you wake up and run in the morning like a guy, you're gonna, it makes your whole day start well, like making your bed. I understand what he's saying. A lot of the other guys using it in a weird way. Be this, be that. Punching pads, it's just like, do it. But, ugh, like, it's not a necessity. If you don't yeah. want to do it, play badminton. Bro, what's this world everyone thinks we live in where we're going to walk on the street and someone's going to challenge you to a duel? Where is this happening? I keep seeing, you must, for what? No, for what? Mm. Like, what's this whole thing of, why, why, why are we trying to fight for what? I, I just want to know, is there a big MMA tag team match coming up? <laughs> with populations going on. Like, where's these fights? My dad's, I don't know how old, never had a fight in his life. Born and as an Asian man coming to UK in the racist days, never had a fight in his life. Where's these fights? Yeah. I think it, it comes from, obviously we have a lot of social media, so anytime there's a fight, there are entire Twitter pages that only post fights. So when people see all these different fights, they think it happens more often than it does. But these fights are, well, again, 
I want to fight you. If you don't want to fight, there's no fight. Like what? you said, walk mm. away. Like yeah. these fights are stand up. Like, majority of the time, yeah, sometimes something will happen. So like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, if you need to defend yourself, but majority of the time, if it's a scumbag, you ain't going to have time. If he's got a weapon, don't do anything. What can you do? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can I, fight. If someone's got a knife, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, most people I think willing to perpetrate in that way will have some kind of weapon mm. on them. I had a, a brother that drove up to, to Niagara Falls. I saw nunchucks in his, <laughs> in his passenger seat. Yeah, I'd risk a nunchuck, bro. I don't know. Unless it's Bruce, what's he going to do with the nunchucks? <laughs> Ninja stars next. Like, But honestly, <laughs> jokes aside, don't have this pressure, guys. I need to train. I need to be strong. Let's work out. Then let's eat together, break the bread with the meat. And then let's sit there and talk about war stories, bro. Yeah. You can sit and play Monopoly. You can yeah. sit and play cards. Who cares? Just, bro. It's just new. Again, it's like trends come and go. Um, I come from that world. I used to do it. I loved, I loved, I watched UFC, Hoyce Gracie. I fell in love with the sport. Yeah. That's why I do it. I, try, I just, it's just me. It's just someone might like paddle tennis. Someone might like swimming. Let them be. Yeah. Like, what's this yeah. pressure like you must do this when you're tong strong and tough I see some guys I don't trust a guy who's not in shape that means he's lazy Gross. I know fat Samoans who are fat all year round but they'll beat you up with like anything and beat you in the gym and smart yeah. what does that mean it's corny yeah. bro it's corny I can't bro, I can't take it I'm, people are gonna take these snippets out and go he's this that so be it like if you've got a problem come see me like I don't yeah. care so it seems like what's more important to you are principles and content of character rather than actual actions. Yeah, bro. I'd rather respect a scrawny, skinny, professional man who's such a good character, smiling, and just you always think that guy's such a nice guy than a guy who thinks he's tough and fakes. You got to do this. If you can, like, I see these motivational speeches online, bro. I hate. They're so corny now. I saw a guy the other day. You know why I clean shave? Show me all the billionaires, they're all clean shaven. A beard. He said, I'm like, bro, you can't grow a beard, that means. That's what he said. There's a video of a guy, I don't know who he is. I think he's mixed race brother from America. He's not a brother, I mean like a non-Muslim. Brother as in brother of color. He's clean shaven. Like handsome man, looks good, everything. He's like, yo, I don't shave because you look at Bill Gates, look at Elon Musk, no one's got a beard. And for me, everyone who does sales don't go with beards because you don't risk. I'm like, bro, just if you can't grow a beard, just say it. What is this myth? Mohammed bin Salman's a trillionaire and he's got a beard. You know what I'm saying? Like, and everyone's like, yo, I'm going to Bro, this is the stuff you see out there. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, it is he, very Content prepared. for anything. I'm going to make another one up today. Like, I don't know. If you can't walk 10 yards with a bucket on your head, you're not a man. Or like, I could start a trend. Like, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I don't know why that works, to be honest. I don't know if it's like when you question someone's masculinity. It's just a trend now. Yeah. Everyone's copying Andrew Tate, bro. They're all copying him. Yeah. He had this original thing. They're all jumping on the board and they're making their own things up. And to be honest, I speak to him. He's fed up of all these guys. I think he, online there's a few. Be he's got fed up of a lot of guys. Yeah. In that content world, he just sees a lot. He's well, I can't. He just he hates it. And uh, be original, do your own thing. But again, don't have this pressure. I need to do this. That if you've got the time, stay healthy. Yeah, be fit for your family. Go on walks. You can do anything, bro. Mm -hmm. So the best way I lost weight, I get big and small, muscular, whatever. Was walking. I went to America. And we were just walking. The weather was nice, you know? Bro, 17, 18,000 steps a day. It's like, man, I'm losing weight. I'm looking okay. Like, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. You know what I mean? Like, mm. every, each to their own, bro. Can you imagine your fathers doing MMA training? And they like, you think, mm, Dad, you look weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to do it, you like it, do it. I love MMA. It's me. Uh, it's my favorite sport in the world. I love boxing. As someone like, I've got friends who like cricket, rugby, uh, making things, uh, whatever, cars. Bro, I know guys who can't even change a tire. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. facts. Bro, yeah. Majority of men can't change tire. Yeah, yeah. Majority of men can't check engine oil. Mm. So a lot of old school men say, you're not a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I get you. So mm. it def define, every error has its different thing. Yeah. Mm. So they're labor workers, bro, all day. If a man says, you're not labor, you're not a real man. Mm. You're sitting there on computers. Well, what's that? You're a nerd. Before mm. you say nerds were on computers, not everyone's a crypto. Yeah, man. In Telegram groups, you come to me, I'll give you tips on how to make millions. Like, the guy can't even spell millions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just like, bro, it's always a trend coming. Uh, Next time it'll be something else. It's like this LGBTQ. Next, they'll normalize pedophilia and bestiality. You'll see. Mm. Next. Uh -huh. It is what it is. So I got some uh, rapid fire, quick fire. Yeah, yeah, sure. Unless y'all got some questions. No, go for it. No? Okay. So, what is your favorite food right now? 
right now. Yeah. I like junk burgers. I, I'm a burgers. I just I'm a junkie. Uh, yeah. Okay. Favorite car to drive. Favorite car to drive. Yeah. Right now. Uh, I don't wanna say. Like it's just. Uh, it's Dunia. Huh? It's Dunia. I don't wanna say any because then people think oh it's flashy and stuff. Honestly, for me, something fast because uh, I just like to just to go places quick. I'm very yeah. impatient. <laughs> okay. Favorite place to travel to. Right now, yeah, Los Angeles, America. I know nah. you're gonna say, yeah, Godless right. LA. LA. I was there. I didn't see I, again. It's what you do and who you're with. Mm. And I said, I love the bro, the sunset and the weather. I, I haven't seen a blue sky in years. Been here. It's almost. It was beautiful. Mm. I saw Muslims. I a blue sky. Wait, this, this blue sky. No, go outside. It's very. St- you'll see what I mean. You, I can't explain that sunset and sunrise in LA was wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the people are friendly. The, I can't explain. Muslims around I was like brothers everywhere and honestly for me it was I loved it I wouldn't live there but to go on holiday and like, bro, I mean the, the weather was perfect kids enjoyed it mm-hmm. uh, the food was quite easy and just seeing different cultures the Hispanic I love the Mexican food tech, yeah. bro, oh, things yeah. I've never had before yeah. I love that kind of culture they're similar to Arabs in a way there yeah. then I just 7-Elevens I see on TV and go into like gas stations it's just weird mm-hmm. like I drove through Compton. I used to like hip hop. I was like, I just love. I can't explain it. And for me, that's my favorite place to travel to yeah. as in a destination. Of course, if you ask me for life side, there's nothing better than Mecca. Yeah. Right? If you're saying a holiday and just to socialize, yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel you on that one, man. My, my wife's actually Californian, so like I've never been to Cali in my life until, until I, I met her. I um I live in Canada, Niagara Falls. So like for some reason, like th- most of the time is gloomy as hell. Gray, like gray all the time it's so depressing like the, the the employees at every shop is just like glum doesn't want to live bro. they don't want to be there they hate everything california has a vibe let's yeah. be honest yeah it has a vibe bro it's i was shocked okay there was marijuana smell everywhere <laughs> i was like what yeah junkies but, on the side of the road yeah, yeah but let me tell you something they're homeless but they're very friendly mm. yeah it's not like going to the streets in tottenham in london or right. something they're just like junkies or but they're not like in your way but the sky, the grass, I went to some like parks, bro. It was like, I was shocked. Yeah. Mm. It was, be- California, it's like, it's nostal- it has this nostalgic vibe. I yeah. felt like I was in Karate Kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, mm-hmm. wow, I like this place. Yeah. There's a lot explain. about it that's just just perfect. Yeah. The I'm weather. Not like, so people say, Godless, bro, what's not Godless now? Mm. What that's is That's true. But, end of the day, it, when I, the scenery, uh, we were like just every day looking off the balcony in the hills and driving around looking at the, that's where OJ Simpson killed his wife and <laughs> <laughs> just whoa oh, and uh, you know like university it's just cool I ain't gonna lie yeah you, Los Angeles was a, I was California beautiful place mm-hmm, the scenery everything alright favourite Sahaba favourite Sahaba uh, I can't say for me I'd always say Abu Bakr is my favourite companion of the Prophet peace be on him I'm I just right. like he was the first Khalif and uh, how he was before as a role model mm. and uh, as a leader and what he did and uh, yeah, yeah I just, you, please don't. Yeah. he's just uh, everything what I read about him is quotes and it's just relative like real that's a man mm. got to define I mean I'm gonna be honest man you to me I, I hate to say it, but I expected something different <coughs> considering you know you're a big guy yeah, yeah, yeah. strong you do MMA yeah, me too. I would have considered you like being this tough guy that's like favorite Sahaba. Okay, Khalid. I'm really tough, yeah, but so I like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know everyone says Khalid and Walid and this that. I, yeah. I put a thing on Twitter about him yesterday, how he's undefeated uh, in battles and uh, I mean Battle of Uhud. The only loss was because of him. Yeah. But Abu Bakr, you got to see leadership. It's not just again, like I said, it's just what everything. He was chosen for a reason, bro. You know, there's debates between different sects of Islam. Oh, yeah. He was for a reason chosen. He gave birth to a scholar in Aisha. Like uh, the way the system worked, you got to look into it. His quotes, his, and also pre Islam, he is he a real solid brother. You know, like yeah. you look into yeah. his story, it's very powerful, like influence. Yeah, some something I, I guess while we're on the topic, something that just kind of came to my mind that's amazing about Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is the way that Omar spoke about him. Yeah. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu he's a big guy he's you know one of the best sahaba they couldn't the Muslims couldn't pray in front of the Kaaba they had to pray in secret in the house they couldn't pray in front of the Kaaba until Umar radiallahu anh, accepted Islam that's when like no one could mess with them now before they would beat them up try and kill them literally Umar is there no one's gonna touch them mm. so this man 
the way he spoke about Abu Bakr and how like he felt like he had him beat in many regards. One one story, he was like, um, we were going to, I think we were going to battle. Prophet asked, you know, what, what did you bring for this? You know, for the sake of Allah. I think Umar and he's like, I brought half of what I have. And then, and then when Abu Bakr came, he didn't ask, what did you bring? He's like, what did you leave behind? Hmm. And then he was like, I left Allah and his messenger. That's what I'm there was a reason. And uh, my, uh, my nephew is named after Umar bin Khattab. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, my sister named him that. And uh, obviously when we go to uh, Medina and you see the burials of, you know, they're all together. And it's just, but for mm. me, just preference. Like, bro, like you said, Khalid, there's so many mm. amazing, uh, yeah. sorry, even Ali, like strong, fearless. Yeah. But just the way Islam it's history and the influence yeah. and just it all happened for a reason. Abu Bakr and the role he had to play. Yeah, it's uh, it's vital, bro. So you have to look at the domino effect and uh, again, a man. A leader, it's all about leadership and the, there's amazing narrations of his character. It's just like you know, but bro, from every prophet, peace be upon them, like the stories like uh, Ayub. When you read about him and when you have hardships and you look at what he went through. Yeah, and I was when I had a bad prop, I was looking into him. And Yusuf, like the look that people go, oh, the bitty camera, Yusuf looks and what he went through and stuff. And uh, so obviously Musa and Ibrahim, and there's so many, Suleiman. Mm. So there's loads, you know, Yahya, Idris. If you want to look into stuff, look at the story of Idris. And some people say that's how, at his time, where the pyramids were built for the giants, you know? Mm. And there's amazing ones. Mm. But it's just, everyone's got their own thing. Of course. But for me, it's just. And I, I also say that to stop other people from hating and uh, another Shia people will hate me, but Abu Bakr, you know, I'm the, the chosen <laughs> caliph. All right, next question. What is the biggest red flag, in your opinion, in women from a marital point of view today? I think the biggest one is asking, like I said earlier, this expecting, like, like the man does what he can for his means. Yeah. Don't put pressure, make him feel... Don't demean a man. The way the man should do it to a woman, don't make him feel like he's not doing well. Mm. Or she, my friend's husband has this or that. I think that's the worst thing, being influenced for this money and the mm. shallow things. For me, that's because that, that stems and that makes everything bad. For me, that's the biggest red flag. A woman okay. who's chasing cash. What about for men? Men. Let's say someone's coming to marry your daughter one day in the future. Being a degenerate, Something. like thinking General. he can have multiple wives just for fun, not understanding the process behind it. Mm. Then... Doing uh, being a scum after that, thinking it's all good, and uh, just being off Dean. A man who can't pray, I don't trust. Mm. A man who doesn't fear Allah, I once tweeted it. If you don't fear Allah, I don't fear. I don't trust that man. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. But what, what, what if he definitely had like a bad past? Like and he's no, and he's and fixed. He's trying to make yeah, of his course, ways, bro. Like, everything Look possible. at Malcolm X. Mm. Look at uh, Khalid bin Walid. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you know, but when I say this, people know. If he's on Dean now, of course I won't care. Mm. If he's on Dean and he's pressing, you'll know. But I'm saying if he's staying that way, I won't like it. Mm. That's why I'm saying the guy chasing my he thinks he's something and uh, he likes to impress everyone. A man who's friends with everyone's also, you've got to be careful of. What about biggest pet peeve? Pet peeve? I hate dirt. Dirt? Yes, and bad smell, you mess. Like, I've got OCD. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Never could have told. Yeah, yeah. bad. Like, my, I'm like a serial killer. Everything's folded. Like, in my gym, when I walk out, if I see things like that, glass has been annoying me. There, the cup you left. <laughs> uh, Exposed. When I do, I do, and I clean the sink after I dry everything. I dry mm. the wet around the sink. Wow. That's I'm why I got good. twitches. Like, everyone thinks I'm on cocaine. I got a twitch from OCD. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone thinks that you're a cocaine. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're, you wanna go? <laughs> it's uh, OCD. I like cleanliness. I like smelling good. Always showering, and uh, I hate shaking normal hands and always wet. After mm. we do dry yourself, please, like you know. It's just my thing. It's a pet peeve. I just like <laughs> everything clean. Like, you know, I'm like, all my cleans clean these smears. Alhamdulillah. Favorite Wait. pastime? Kids all day long. Just chill with my children. Mm. You said that you don't trust uh, a man who's like friends with a lot of people. Why? Because he does whatever it is to impress those people. He'll be a Muslim. He'll be a Muslim with the other ones. He'll be a drinker. Pleasing. He's just, pleasing. He's just whatever they think. Topic. Yeah, yeah. I like, no. You'll have a man. If a man's a respectable man, there'll be a lot of enemies. Mm. Unfortunately, there's enemies. People don't dislike him because they see him as a threat. Mm. Always be respectful, but if he's friends with everyone, this is weird, bro, for me. Mm. You know? 
What would you say your two biggest things would be that you're working on right now? Uh, myself and my children to teach them Islam properly. That's my biggest, in a way where it's, they're four years old, but early to know what's good, that's haram, that's not good. Mm. Just little things slowly without, you know, making them like normalize things. And myself, of course, I always have to work on myself, bro. I make mistakes all the time. Mm. They're lazy, sometimes I'm delaying a prayer. Don't miss it, but delaying is bad. Little habits, sometimes pray more far than sunnah. Another thing, Russian. It's one of my biggest problems. Mm. You know what we, I'm actually, saying? we actually watched this video yesterday about this doctor. I think he was like a neuro neurologist or something. Yeah. And they did these brain scans. You want to talk about that? Yeah, they, so he, he took the brain scan when he rushed in his salah. And um, it was like, all over, you could see it, like the activity is all over the place. And then he focused on it. He literally sent the cameraman out of the room because he really wanted to focus. He prayed his salah, did brain scans again. And you could see... There is symmetry in the middle. It's not active, not a lot going on. The neurologist described it as like you're in submission, basically. That's, it's so important because uh, what's the worst feeling when you pray, when you forget how many rakahs you've done? Oh my God, yeah. That's the worst. And I'm like, of course, and we do the other extra sujood and the other stuff, but it's just like, what am I doing? What? Your mind, you know? Tarawih as well. Sometimes during Tarawih, you just, you know, we're all, we're all uh, human. Your mind wanders. Mm. You know what I mean? This is my, uh, I need to work on a lot of these things sometimes. You know, um, it uh, annoys me. And the worst for me, wallahi, if I am, uh, by unintentionally, really, alhamdulillah, really, if I miss Fajr or oversleep or the alarm, I just clonked, I'm a KO, my whole day's ruined. My whole day is ruined. I swear, I can't explain it. Yeah, It's just the worst for me. I'm like, what a scum, this, this, this. And literally, mm. like, why did I hear it and whatever, you know, that, that, that I swear my whole day's ruined. I'm, I start grouchy, I let get up and I'm just in a mood all day. Mm. What about your favorite all-time fighter? In boxing or MMA or everything? Boxing. Oh, it's Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali? Wow. All day. What about MMA? <sighs> so, I mean, I've got, I'm friends with so many, you know, like mm. I've been around the circuit that long. Honestly, I'm going to say Hamza Chimaev now. My favorite all time. Yeah. Why so? Been around and see his work ethic, seeing how much of a phenom he is, and uh, we're close brothers. But I just, I just, I've never seen or witnessed someone uh, so gifted and strong. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong guy. He is, uh, unless Allah, if Allah doesn't will it for him, I can't. I've never met a man as tough as him. Wow. Allah bless him. How was your experience meeting Khabib? Yeah, Khabib is very nice, humble brother, good guy. Very good brother, simple guy, very good guy, yeah. Mm. See, people like Andrew Tate, I compare that to Khabib too. Although Andrew Tate was a revert, Khabib was a born Muslim, mm. but Khabib really did bring a lot of attention and light into Islam. He did, he did. When that thing happened with McGregor. So are there anything that, let's say when this whole thing was going down with McGregor and Khabib, what was going through your mind with how McGregor was treating Islam and Muslims? Uh, me, different, because I know it's to sell a fight. I don't take it personal. Mm. I don't take it personal when someone burns a Quran. Why are we giving him face? Why are you protesting go against it? That's what he wants. You're falling into his trap. I don't even acknowledge it. They're idiots. They're monkeys. They don't know. When a Quran's damaged, what's the best way to discard it? You burn There's it. There's two ways. You burn it. Yeah. That's one of the ways. So that dirty hands, that pigs touched it. Burn it, no problem. Yeah. Burn them all. We'll have a new Quran in three hours. Exactly the same narration by how many half his millions? You cannot get rid of it. It's a miracle for Quran. If every Quran was gone tomorrow, like every Mus'haf? Oh, it'll okay. be in hours. Hours. Exactly, mm. word for word. Yeah. Why stress? Why? So, my Greg, I knew it. It's just for fight selling, bro. Muhammad Ali used to call Joe Frazier Uncle Tom in a bad time. The whole black community went against him. He did worse, bro, as well. Mm. Equivalent. In a time where it's very bad. Like Uncle Tom is a sellout to the black race. Mm. People, forgive that. Don't forget Muhammad Ali went against Malcolm X. Chose a nation over him when he went on Dean. People forget this. Oh. Mike Tyson bit a man's ear. <laughs> what? He bit oh, his ear. Yeah. People love him. McGregor's kafar. He's just trying to get in his head. But what I rate was when Khabib, when he did that at the weigh-in. That's brave and the f uh, thing he had. So it was powerful, but can't take it to light, bro. This is just, I told you, it's, it's fake like these content creators. It's all BS. Yeah. Yeah. Connor, I know personally, has so many Muslim friends and respects Islam. Shit, I know. Off camera. He's, wow. okay. he's loads. I'm telling you, it's not what wow. you think. 
Unfortunately, life is they sold seats. Yeah. He lives in Dubai. He's coming to Dubai all the time. He respects, he loves law. He's like this. Whoa. Believe me, don't go buy that rubbish, bro. It's fake. Hmm. But obviously, oh. you can't mess with Dagestanis. They don't take it as fake. Yeah, yeah. that's facts. <laughs> what about your favorite uh, protein powder? I don't have protein powders. What hmm. do you eat? It's meat? It's and I eat whatever. I don't hmm. have a protein supplement in my life. You oh, track? I, my brother used to have a comment. I never have them. I never. So do you track oh. macros or? No, bro. <laughs> so you just eat whatever? I'm, I'm straight, brother. <laughs> 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 I never tracked or check weight. My, I don't get this. <laughs> Two pounds. <laughs> uh, let me do this. Bro, never in my life. I was just last night. I had a hug, tug, tub of hug and dice chocolates. I just train hard, sweat and burn and eat. Bro, what is this tracking macros, bro? You think Arnold Schwarzenegger did that in the eight, in the 60s? No. Train mm -hmm. hard, work hard, then you can eat and enjoy. I don't know. Do never that. in my life, bro. Ask anyone. Ask them what I eat every day. Chocolates, mm. crisps. I don't care. I'm going to ask two more questions and then I'll pass it on to the brothers. So favorite chocolate? Dairy, milk, fruit and nut. A man of specificity. Bro, I had a bar like that last night every day. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Wait, let me show you something quickly. Let's see if the camera can zoom in. Inshallah. I, did I delete it? No, 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 no. This was me last night. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Lots of kinder. Oh, my God. Allah, my God. Let's not pull the story, but I won't be like, oh, but yeah, that's me. <laughs> but raw and unfiltered, uncut. Stuff for a lot. Just my last question, bro. Tip. Tell us something that, and if you're only okay with it, a secret that nobody else knows, untold secret about Tam Khan. That no other podcast, no one else, exclusive. Mm. A secret. Can't think. Well, that secret might get me in jail. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. A secret. Uh, Yeah, bro, when you have kids, it softens you. Like, I've never, I'm not one to cry. No, I don't cry. I'm very, like, everyone says I'm a bit too serious, like I can sit in funerals. But when you have kids, if I see a movie now and kids are harming, I have to hold it. I go, change the channel, yeah, it's all right. Like, just hold it. You become soft. Oh, so bad, like, man. yeah, like I saw one video of that kid who was washed on the beach. Remember a Syrian refugee? Yeah. Okay, and that, bro, that killed me. I can watch it. But before that, I, I'm not one to cry or be like, I'm very weird like that. And uh, yeah, since I've had kids, I guess cry. I'll cry over a movie or whatever, but I don't show anyone. It's mm -hmm. kids. If I see kids or something or a movie or kids, I'm like, oh, I think of my kids and that, that, that's it. But uh, no secrets, like other secrets, I guess I can't say on a podcast. <laughs> and plus, never reveal your sins, past sins. Yeah, never collect true. witnesses. It's, you should be ashamed. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. I have one question that I've, I've been uh, I've been curious about, just to hear your general thoughts on it for a while. Um, how does how do you think a person builds courage or bravery? You mentioned like you know um, Hamza, you mentioned Habib, how he did this, you know, said Alhamdulillah, he said that you know I know you guys don't like it, but Alhamdulillah, mm. how does one build the courage? Like, because people be, get see it. Close to Islam, that's the only answer. Be yeah. close to Allah, you'll feel nothing. Yeah, only fear Allah. That's that's the only way. He's mm. the maker. He he takes your life. He makes it. No one else. No can cancer's the form they let you think it's Allah's will, will. Whatever what, it was, Allah's will. Whether it's the donkey jumps on your car, you fall off that chair, heart attack, an accident, slip in the bath. People have died slipping in the bath. No, hit the head. Yeah, that's true. It's just a means to take away the stress. The angel of death took you know when Allah wants. So why your death is set? All of us when we are gonna die. So, when you're not stressed and you know the rewards, why do you care what people think? Just, yeah. It is what it is. Okay, so with that being said, at one point you were saying that you got to the point where you no longer fear death. And it's, you know, if it comes, it comes, you know, colors, like you're ready to meet Allah. Like, when did that happen? When did you get to that point? After my visit to Mecca. Mm. And I had a calamity before that and getting close and reading and, like, again, stories of the Prophet Ayub and... When I really understood Islam properly, then before I'd be a turbulence on a plane like this, <laughs> Dwars, Quran on the Emirates, and the people think he's a terrorist or something. I was like, yeah. oh, and everyone's on a flight like this. I swear. <laughs> now it's like you know, it is what it is. I swear to you, it's like I'm ready. Alhamdulillah, I am ready. 
Inshallah, Allah forgives me for every mistake I make, but I, I mean. beg for forgiveness every dua. I pray, do dhikr, I try my best. So uh, it's set for you. So no, I don't. So if you don't mind me asking, what was the calamity? Yeah, I was going to say if you don't mind. This is, I don't want to get on, on topic. Yeah. Gotcha. More other yeah. things. So this is yeah. the secret. It's not a secret. secret. It's just uh, it's personal. It's something. Yeah, it's personal, you mm. know? It's better this way. I'm the How has that changed you though? Yeah, it made me calmer. Could have gone two ways, bro. I could have. I don't know how to say it. Could have killed someone, mm. or beat Hamad gone close to Islam, and I chose the second. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah. boom. Yeah. When you went to Mecca and you saw the Kaaba for the first time, mm. how was that experience? Well, powerful. That had a good sheikh take us with us, so we were doing the dua before. And he goes, "Raise your head as you come out to the thing." I swear, like. It was just, bro, when I was doing Salah there, every time, I was just looking at the Kaaba. Head, I couldn't go down. I was just the whole time like, wow, this is all my life, been looking at this thing, <laughs> finally. And you're really, like, since we're kids, every, like, Salah mat, you see the, it was like, wow, bro, for me, it was just, bro, that time there, it was not long after my calamity, and you know, it saved me humble. I saw big, like, Russian Dagestani brothers, like, necks, ears, one bawling his eyes out sitting there, he must have had an issue. I, don't, I was just like, wow, bro, it, it's the best thing I ever did and saw. It was wow. And just like, it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. I, because I went to the Clock Tower Hotel, but I weren't looking out the window by purpose. I said to brothers, keep the curtains closed. I want to go live. Do not show me. Do not show me. And it was just wow. Surreal. Surreal. I've had friends tell me stories. They burst in tears crying. Some felt this, like their legs went. It was just like, not... Another level, not like this, but when you used to fight, you'd come out through a tunnel in this arenas, whatever, yeah? And this dun 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 Times one million. This heart, and you're like that, and you look, oh, wow. And you're like, voila, yalla, go, move, move. Move with the line, you know? Like, <laughs> and I'm just like this. What? Like, wow, this is it. It's just, <coughs> wow. wow. It's so hard. Powerful. It's powerful. See, we went two days, and Anho felt this state of, you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you were in there, did you feel like it was almost like a trance? It's just no. You don't care of anything. You, there, you, stuff for like, you think, I'd love, to, I want to die now. I could die here. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very weird. If I want to die, let me die right this, like there. Do you know what I mean? Who does that? Let me just die in posture. Bro, I was sitting there. Then I kept putting it back on, pretend I'm doing umrah just to go and pray there every day. You know, because yeah, yeah, all the time. I was just there all the time. I just loved it. I couldn't believe it. And uh, surreal, bro. It's just wow. And it's like, uh, well, it was just... I took some famous YouTubers with me, Adam Saleh, Slim. Uh, there's a lot of us. I took them all with me. They're all like that. Everyone was just like, wow. Mm -hmm. We had a group of us. It was good. It was funny, funny times. And uh, yeah, everyone was just talking stories and uh, just, yeah, bro. Uh, nothing like it. Now, inshallah, my kids, I want to go with my daughters. They're that age because it's too young. It was crowded. I want to oh, take yeah, them yeah. out. Make it, uh, That's the dream for me. Thing. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess what I mean is not trans, more so... You know, when you went in there, you were just amazed. Were yeah, but it's just like, you know, you anticipate to see something. Like some people, stuff like they, they celebs, they look their whole life and they meet them like this. When Michael Jackson was alive, people would collapse, oh, her arm way. But for us, that car by, it's like, whoa. We've always prayed this direction. Now we're here, we're all praying around it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. this, that's it. And then you remember prophets and people were there. Then when you go to Medina, you remember Medina. And I went to Uhud and you think, this was this, this was here. The prophet prayed here. Just you're sitting there going, wow, yeah. it's just mad, surreal. Mm. So yeah, you know, for me it's just wow. Yeah. I feel like I feel like a weirdo now because for me, we went to Medina first. Usually people go to Medina and then they do Mecca. Um so when I was in Medina, I was I was bawling my eyes out the whole time. You guys probably remember I was crying. And was true, um yeah. it was life changing. Um but when I got to Mecca, it was just I got this, I don't know, I got this feeling like this This is where the Prophet Sallallahu started his mission, right? This is where the Prophet received Islam and preached to the people mm. and, um, you know, he wanted to establish Islam. So when I was there, I got this feeling of like, I, I need to finish and I need to leave and I need to go because I have, I have a mission as well. I have to continue, you know, to, 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 to bring people to Islam to the best of my ability, inshallah. And um, yeah, I feel like everyone else has a completely different experience. Not for me, I love Madiba, but Mecca for me is different. Yeah. When I went to Medina, I had to go back. I said, let's go back again. I did another Umrah. You did Mecca, then Medina? Yeah. I got you. And then, and then you I went back. to go back again. Mm, I had to I keep going you back. You prefer Mecca? 
I love, love them, I, I couldn't stay. I, could, I love Medina, but Mecca for me was different, bro. It's just the car, but it's different. Yeah. I just can't connect, bro, when it's so crowded in Mecca compared to Medina. That killed me. Yeah. You know, didn't even, I didn't, I didn't see people, bro. I can't explain it. It I didn't phase you. No. Mm. Bro, I was barge, barging me. Usually, uh, I didn't get my nothing. I'm just looking, I'm just thinking, you know? Wow. So, why you live over here, not in Mecca? Because unfortunately, I don't know why they don't develop the place outside the Kaaba. Just, you know, yeah. Yeah. spend some money there. Like, this, I don't get it. It's weird. It's like everywhere else in Isa, you go there and it's just left and it's Mecca. Like, just make a development next to it. People live. And plus, I've got to provide. So, it's here. So, for me, I've always got to provide my family. It doesn't mean like I can sit in the mushrooms all day, read Quran. I still have a job. Yeah. Mm. A responsibility, yeah. and people have to forget that. So I have to do things what I have to do. Yeah, there's a, yeah it's, sorry, because it's, it's on this point you mentioned before, and there's a hadith about this. Um, the the Sahaba they were with the Prophet him, and he was talking about Jannah and Jahannam until it was as he said it was as if I could see it. Mm. And then he's like, he narrates, he's like, I left, I went to my family, my kids, my wife, my business, and I like I couldn't see Jannah and Jahannam anymore. It was like I forgot, you know. But this, the Prophet also said work. You know what I mean? If yeah. you have to travel to other worlds, you have to put their work in as well. Yeah, the, the hadith comes full circle, I promise, on, on that exact topic. So he went to Abu Bakr and he was like, I basically, I become a hypocrite because I used to basically like see heaven and hell and all of a sudden I can't anymore. So he went to the Prophet and he told him this. He's like, I have left and I went to my family and, and I did my business and I forgot. And the Prophet said something very similar. He's like, there's a time for this and there's a time for that. And that is something I, I want to mention because you highlighted it a few times. There's Islamic grounds for that as well. There is. And, uh, People and I, when I, I don't like to get into it too much because people might um, interpret it wrong by saying, "Oh, that means it comes before Islam." It doesn't. But mm -hmm. we have roles, we have responsibilities. Yeah. We're here, and uh, many things we have to um, kind of carry out in order for our family and things. Responsibilities as a man. That's yeah. a, like I said, that's a man's responsibilities, and uh, yeah. the same way, marriage is half your deen. Yeah. 100%. So if it's half your dean, why are you not going to behave when you're doing it? <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's another thing I forgot to say to guys, like get married young, um, mm. find a good spouse. And when you're choosing this, people are going to take it wrong. So I got this of Sheikh Khaled Yassin, one of all the legends of purpose of life, you know, from America. Mm. He said, uh, the hour after the shower is all the same, bro. You know what, like when she wakes up and sees me every day, look, just oh, it's that ugly, big, bald, fat tam. Or... Looks go, bro. My point is, looks will fade. Have a car for a two, three months, it's bored. You're bored of it. No, it's true. Yeah. It goes, don't go for this. Of course you have your attractions. Go for a woman who is on Dean. Yeah. Believe me, and women go for a man who's on Dean. If they're not, I don't care if he looks like DiCaprio, El O Cool, I don't know what they're like now, Cristiano Ronaldo. If he's not on Deen or close to Islam, don't even bother. And I say the men, for the men the same. Yeah. Someone who's close to Islam is very, very important for to have a successful marriage and, and get on. Because again, everyone looks fade, bro. As in, not fade. You're used to that. Yeah. It's not. It's mm. bigger than that. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you have a preference, but look out. Uh, look outside the box a bit. You know. So yeah. what, what advice would you have for men that, let's say re recently they got married, right? And they might ask questions like, you know, I have debt to pay off. I have to get my money up. I have to focus on dunya. I don't want to have kids right now. And maybe they might think, you know what? I got to delay having kids, which is something I want to do for something that is important to me. But who says she the, the woman says I don't have kids no, now. No, like the, the man wants to have kids too, right? But he's like... But who's saying I want to delay? Let's say the man or both. Yeah, but, okay, my because point they want to get the dunya first. Allah bring... Listen... There's, when's the right time? What is how much money? What, answer me. What is enough money for a child? There's no perfect time. Yeah. What's enough money for a child? Mm. I was having a tough time when yeah. we. Uh, really? Allah, my mom always used to tell me Allah will bring. What's that word? Like uh, success. It'll make a way when you have kids, and the things come. There's no right time. What? What do you mean? A million dollars? Hundred thousand dollars? Ten? Like what? What yeah. if someone has debt? Yeah, so it's gonna it, it, try your best, but bro, when the kids born at least for two years or a year, it's just nappies, some black poop, and some formula <laughs> and breast milk if she doesn't want to breastfeed. Bro, what's this myth? The kid, half the time, most families share put the kid in the same bed because they're scared to mm. have him in the cot. Like, uh, let's be honest, yeah, and it costs you're around, yeah, you'll be all around, costs are cheap. Mm. People give the community, yeah, they give, bro, old school families never had nappies. Our parents is 
parents. Mm. Wrap them in towels, wash, whatever. Bro, I can't look at feces, but my kid, I was like, yeah, I don't care, wipe the like bum. Because your kid, that will come and go. Allah will bring, what's the word? Risk. Risk. Risk, yeah. Risk. Bring, something, it's just your... Baraka. Baraka. Mm -hmm. It'll come. You can't think like that. Your debt might never go, but it might go. You, this <sighs> responsibility. Imagine that never goes and you regret delaying having kids and now you can't even... Yeah, you, you don't know. know. And breast, breastfeeding brother, free, bro. bro there's, let me tell you to all the uh, brothers and sisters out there, yeah. The, uh, the children is the biggest blessing in this world. I'm telling you what, I, I forget what life was about. I know the purpose of life, but I forget what I was doing before. So what was I doing? What did I enjoy? I love, I'd run back to see him play. I can sit there and watch them doing their little doll things or how they talk or cheeky and their mannerisms and they school. Like, bro, it's like, subhanAllah, it's the best gift a man can ask for a woman, children. And then it's your test. And subhanAllah, no disrespect to people who can't have children, I'm just saying, for me, yeah? And uh, because there's many, um, there's circumstances. Yeah. But it's a blessing. It's for me, I don't know what the purpose was. I'm telling you, I'm t uh, for me, it's just wow. Like. Then you get to AJ talking to you and you're just like holding your hand and that smell of a baby. There's a smell, bro. When they lay on you, they're breathing. Bro, I hate breath. I hate people coming near me, yeah? <laughs> I'm weird, bro. Like, you know, like, don't touch me. I'm weird. I want to sleep on. I just don't want anyone near me, yeah? I sit. I go to the toilet for like an hour. I sit there, yeah? S scheming what I'm doing in life. Just weird, bro, yeah? <laughs> weird man stuff, you know? So that's like, I swear it's bad for my body. I just sit. You know, my legs go numb. I'm like this, getting up, washing. Uh, <laughs> Straight out my leg, and I'm like, I see, bro, I've just got this habit since a kid. Like, it's my mom. <laughs> my mom goes, What are you doing? An enema. Like, just get out of there. Like, I'm weird. Then I go to the West, and there's like, I take this washer. It's just more you have to shower after. It's not like here. Stress, you're in, you have to hold yourself all day. And this, like, you could go this now. There's no, there's no washers. It's not like Dubai. Everything's got to be there. You're a washer. So uh, that's, that's what I hate by the West. <laughs> this wash. But um, my point is, I've got off topic talking about me being doing um, stuff for a lot of toilet. Is <laughs> kids, their smell, their breath, it's just beautiful and it makes any man soft. Kids are, bro. So try best, have kids young, enjoy it. Why do you want to be 60 and your kids are teen? Be a young kid, have a relationship where you can talk to them, not like our parents, like you can, they can confide in you. I already feel old, like, God forbid, I might not be around when they're teens, you never know. So my point is, I'd love to be a young father if I could have. You have a son, you can teach him baseball, football. Walk with them, talk about, oh, you saw this, or the girls take them out, walk at girls' day. I take my kids out now, the movie, or they come with me, walk around the mall, they go play in the games, or ice cream. You know, because I'm, I'm bad. My wife, I to give them sweets, and I'm stupid like that. We have to hide it. I say, come, come, let's get some ice cream. You know? They're like, yeah, va, 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 va's time. So, bro, trust me, experience this better than anything, bro. I've seen and done a lot as well. I'm telling you, private jets, all this stupid stuff, yachts. I've seen and done it. Celebrities, you name it, I've been there, done it all. Like, not just chasing, been in circles of people. Trust me, nothing comes close to this, nothing. Yeah. Gar I'm yeah. telling you straight. And a lot of these people who live that life, I saw Dan, Dan Bilzerian, he said a quote the other day, it was quite true. He said, Bro, I've got this, mate, it doesn't make you happy. He said about he's got 150 mil, then you want 200, you have, have so many women, cars, this, that. He goes, You could see he's, he, he's not content. Yeah. He's got muscles, he's ex this, he's got women, he's got money, cash, cars. And he, it's, I posted it on Instagram, I wrote a quote underneath. Not, still not content. What's next? Spaceships? What? Buy a zoo? What, I, like, where does your fund, like, what's next? There's, you know? So it's not like there's specific mechanisms to get your risk up, but it's like, put your trust in Allah, have kids, fulfill your purpose, and Allah will yeah, take care of Yeah, for me, it'll come, it's Oh, you're giving birth and you're going to develop new, new children, teach them Islam, teach them how to be good people. Mm -hmm. Bro, why? The West is also failing in a way where other nationalities are not having children anymore, breaking the family. That's why Islam's grown as well. Like, it's, people not getting married, people not having kids like they used to. Well, Islamic families, boom, boom, boom. That's why Islam's spreading even faster. Yeah. That's true. Okay, question. So, with that being said, what do you advise people who are about to have kids? Yes, this is a good idea. Advice is just to enjoy the ride, bro. Enjoy it. Me and I had no clue, no family, no parents live here with us. They're all abroad. We just learn from friends and this, that, and just, you enjoy it, bro. It's just, wow, bro. Imagine part of your 
genetics and your partner's genetics and you see that, it's, bro, you're like, what is this? It's a connection you cannot explain. Now you know how your parents feel. You might listen to that. What do you mean by that? Like when they used to tell you off and like why they're always worrying. Cause bro, you, that, that's why they were like that. You don't understand to your parent. Then imagine the creator who makes your parents, your grandma, your grandfather, the trees, everything. And none of us even show homage to that. Wow. Do you know what I'm saying? If your mum says go get groceries, you'll run. We don't show respect to the source that made everything, made my kids. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That also woke me up and I was like, you know, uh, I did the uh, Adhan in each ear, the was and I went straight. It was Fajr time, I went to pray. And I was like, oh, like, when your wife's pregnant, all you pray for is the health of the kids. Yes. And the mother, You'll see. And the wife, yeah. You'll see. Yeah. You know those people that sometimes they, they choose to have confidence in Allah and I don't want to know the, the sex of the kid. I want to just leave it until it's like, you know, due and I leave it a surprise. And then there's other people that like as soon as you know the gynecologist can let you know they're on that. So what type of person do you think you'd be? I was. I wanted to know. You wanted to know. Yeah. You don't believe sur no surprises. I, bro, I don't like surprises. You gotta know what to shop for. No, not even shop, bro. They can wear anything, innit? They're bro, babies. <laughs> <laughs> what blue, pink? Who cares? They're just like, is it free? Pass it down from my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know how our cultures are. I had a kid. Yeah. It, that's the good thing about babies. Thanks. Because they grow out of everything. So there's always things. I could offer things, so many, but then brands reach out and stuff. But I tell my friends who have, I said, you need anything, let me know. We've got things. Uh, that's the community is like that. It no, helps. No, no. There's always ways to help, bro. Then why do you want to know? Just to prepare? I th Curiosity? Just for names. Names, okay. Because <laughs> it's important, in my opinion. But everyone's different. Mm. My sister didn't want to know. Some don't. I'm impatient, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm very impatient. And uh, yeah, everyone's different. It's just a thing you can have, you know? But it's just the wise and all stop. Be healthy, be healthy, inshallah. They're healthy. That's all you pray for. So respect to all those parents out there who have kids who are people of determination or down the road that struggle. Those parents, you have to respect how hard it is to raise kids, but with a disability. Imagine. I respect those. And I respect the parents who knowingly knew this because you can do a test and still keep the child. For me, that's really you respect warrior. They're, they're heroes, whatever religion. Believe me, you'll you understand one day. So I have friends who have got children who've got autist, autism and stuff, and I see the struggles and the sacrifice they make. And bro, trust me, Allah will bless them and those children. Believe me, Allah is so merciful, and, uh, religion is so beautiful, guaranteed they're going to be blessed. You can tell how beautiful Islam is. So you everyone, I, that's people like that I respect more than any like Mike Tyson character. Mm. Do you think your risk or just dunya, there was a difference in how much Allah was giving you in terms of sustenance after you had kids? Or do you no, think it was just when I was on Dean? On Dean, okay. I swear. When I, I, sw I don't want to say it where if you practice, you might not get anything. You yeah. might not be in there. You Shouldn't might not. Be, yeah. It's your risk. But I found a lot of success came when I asked Allah and I prayed and everything. Mm. There's a quote, right. there's a hadith, it was like, if, if you put Allah first, the dunya is going to be at your feet. Yeah, yeah, that's a hadith. It's, mm. But I can't answer your question why so many people in these countries are not getting that and they're poor. I can't, people say, what about these people? And they're but, test. but the majority of people in the hereafter in heaven will be poor. Yeah. So there's your answer, they, they win. Wow. That's true. So in another way, they win. Yeah. That's mm. when I sometimes think, oh, so there's always so, an answer, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's because of worth. Because worth is such a huge test. Of you know? course, bro. It is a test. Sometimes people go, yeah, you say this, but I've been, look, it is. But especially in the West, okay? Let me get an example. It, it can be hard, but there's so many ways around it. There's welfare. There's benefits in the UK. There's ways around it, yeah? You still can survive, yeah? Well, you can survive, you can live. There's people, especially in Muslim brotherhood, brothers look after everyone. There's always a way. But look at these other countries. They're working, they're sleeping on the street and they're still smiling and praying. So you, there's always something worse. So always say, Alhamdulillah, whatever, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? You guys are in shape, you uh, look smart, young. Bro, there's always worse. Mm. You're traveling doing podcasts, bro. So yeah, that's that's true. True. you're living life, bro. Well, yeah, that's a... Uh, What's wealth then? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not. 
is it? Some people say it's not a job. They say you're living good. Alhamdulillah. So you gotta be blessed. Whatever you say. Peace of mind is a real bro, like, yeah. It's the mind. It's this social media has made it worse. This this last generation, we see things more. But guys, everything you see is not what you think. Hmm. No one exposed. Rental cars, fake. The watch, it's all fake. I've been around back seat. I, I, I think it's real. These hip hop videos, it's all fake. They're all hired. I'm around. I've, done, I've acted. I've done movies. I've seen yeah. music videos. It's all boring models, cars, house. It's all fake. I know people have used fake houses for MTV uh, cribs. Oh, wow. My God. What? It's not their house. They used a friend's house. I recently saw this thing on Instagram. You're going to be in a movie with Jackie Chan soon? I did it. I was a bad guy. It's old. Well, how, how long ago was 2019. it? 2019. The Vanguard 19. movie, yeah. Wow. Is, is, I think it started recently on your Instagram feed, though. Maybe you don't post much. Yeah. I just scrolled just, a bit yeah, inside. Right, okay. Maybe. So yeah, it's old. Up, yeah. Mm. I, was I didn't know you were an actor. I'm not. Just don't <laughs> ask how it happened. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I had a support role and I, I did okay, I think, you know? Yeah, it's experience. It's funny. <laughs> I got offered other things, but then uh, it was just uh, the timing. It was COVID. I just didn't bother. It wasn't, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's time for all these things. Mm. Yeah, it's time. I think this is how you make it and you can organize things. You can make time for anything. That's people say, I ain't got time for this, that. They're just lying, bro. They don't want to be there. All right. Last question for the quick fire Q&A. Are you a night owl or an early riser? Both. I sleep three, four hours a day. How? Oh, wow. Let's do I went to sleep yesterday. I was talking to, was it you, Remy? I was talking to you to what time? I said you can sleep in 3 a.m.? I, th I don't think so. I don't think that was me. You're going to pull up the receipts? Yeah. Receipts. Hold on. What's that? Up at 3 a.m.? I'm pretty sure I knocked Where's out. the cup? Not this. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom in on this editor. <laughs> uh, I spoke to you after Fudger. Wait, let me see. What was it earlier? So I spoke to you, sorry, after Fudger. Yeah. 6.20. But yeah. I was up. My last thing at night was, yeah, like 3, I thought, like 3. 3-ish, 2.33 a.m., fall asleep, wake up, fudge at 5. Wow. And then I'm what? up. Was it always like that? Or yeah, yeah I've got, I never sleep. What the heck? I can't sleep what? if I want to. I want to lay in, I can't. Do you think people are all wow. different? Because the average person needs, like, what, 6 to 10 hours? So how do you, yeah, is it who, you? Says, who says that? Mm. I know you should sleep more. I know they say this. I can't function on have that. Have your breakfast, lunch, but, bro, <laughs> the old days, you used to hunt for days to get the food. You didn't have breakfast, lunch, dinner. You'd have to uh, use those rations over the time and walk for thousands of miles. That's true. Survived and strong men. So it's a myth, bro. It's all the mind. I hardly sleep, bro. I literally, it's a mad thing. People what about don't testosterone? Believe. Like to optimize it. They say you need like five to eight hours of sleep minimum. Bro, for testosterone. Alhamdulillah. When I wake up in the morning, it's, uh, so I'm okay. It's a test. <laughs> <though. laughs> it's the morning glory, they call mm. it. But when that's a, the diet comes down to that bro yeah, you, were, you were speaking about the diet out there you said that you you fast all the way up until nine o'clock every single day so is it one meal a day that you do yeah i'll have a, i'll just eat whatever i want in that time and that's it oh, i'm not even hungry okay. now i haven't eaten just drinking so water from now. 6 a.m so probably 12 to 15 wow. hours you don't eat i'm at 6 a.m that time i'll eat for an hour and i'm done i pass out eating carbs I like a drift on the sofa watching something or for the playing kids and then if I go see someone, that's it. You don't feel like you start getting anxious though? Like I'm used to it. I swear I feel strong. 23 hours. I feel strong and much better without it. I did the other, I wanted to do a three day fast the other day, right? I read about how it repairs yeah, itself. Yeah. Autophagy. And I did, uh, I was on the second two two days and then I had to take the kids somewhere and I thought, oh, I've got to sit with eat with them. I didn't, I didn't have to. I thought now I'm with them and with this place and it was a kid's, what was it? So I just did it. But I need to do that one day. I just want to try it. Yeah, the three day fast are amazing, bro. On water, water fasting yeah. uh, I feel it I feel it good uh, I, I anything I eat I just empty uh, I go I can go bathroom after a bottle of water I'm weird <laughs> hold up wait so have you been doing this diet for a very long period of time I've, I've been doing intermittent fasting for years but uh, like I was in the States going, oh, this buffet, I just hardly, just hardly eat I don't have eat you, I like have you ever tried doing it when you were more lean when I was more lean and ripped my best shape ever I was eating uh more, I was eating because I was building solid muscle and I had a plan, but I was having my breakfast after cardio. I did fasted cardio. I'd walk a lot. My first meal would be about 12, 1 o'clock and I'd have like 12 eggs and then I'd have wow. some oatmeal before my workout and after my workout, some grilled chicken. So it was not a lot. Gotcha. It was like this, you know? Yeah, I wonder, man. My body type, if I eat a lot, I get huge and fat and big, so I don't have to eat a lot. My yeah. brother also, 
we've got a good like quite a strong big bar and he's like most people think it's on steroids it's not mm. it doesn't anything it's just it's just our family build that's what I was saying there's no bro. the reason I ask man is because for myself if I'm fasting whether it's intermittent whether it's Islamic it doesn't matter even water I just feel terrible because I barely have any fat on my body so I wonder if it was the same for you yeah no yours you definitely like, I've got a lot of storage see I've got a lot of storage that's what they say about it it, go, it goes past your glycogen and it takes this and the fat story everyone's different you know mm-hmm but I feel energetic and I feel strong. Like I was benching, repping 140 kilo yesterday with a brother and fasting, yeah. I, I, I do, and I don't know free weight bench, I just train. Like I like to just sweat, I'm weird. I don't oh, care about no. heavy weights, but it's for me, everyone's different. I know guys who have loads of meals. Mm. Uh, I can't eat before I work out, I feel bloated, I hate it, I hate mm. food. I just like to be empty all the time. I feel agile when I'm empty, it's yeah, weird. I feel that. I can't go out. Like, uh, you know, you don't want to be with your wife bloated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Everyone wants to be empty. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, just that feel of, oh, you feel bloated. Uh, just, I, when I go out, take the kids out, walk, I have to be empty. And yeah, mentally, you're just not there too. Yeah, once you eat, that's it, I'm done. Like, I just, I'm eating, that's it, I'm resting, now I'm done. I feel that. I know guys mm. used to f- eat before they fight. I don't know how they do it. I know <laughs> guys who eat all the time. I know guys who are eating just before they jump in the gym. Like, they're eating there. Mm. I'm like, well, how do you do that? Everyone's different, bro. Everyone's different. But this works for me. And uh, again, shows the p- power of uh, the miracle of Islam, how it's a proof. The Prophet, peace be upon him, always said how fasting is uh, very beneficial and how he do it every Monday and Thursday. Now the signs are saying fasting is very good. This, that. Yeah. But they're, they're finding out 1,400 years later. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true though, no? SubhanAllah. Yeah, absolutely. Everything they recommend for your health is, is coming out now. Alhamdulillah. Black seed oil. All these things. Honey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honey. Yeah, honey, yeah, that's a big one. Um, lots of water and Zam Zam, they try to do everything. Like, it's just sleeping on your right side. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Doctors are saying it's good. It's less pressure on the kidney, liver, and heart. So that's how you should sleep. Mm. Never on your front. They said don't sleep on your front. And they say in the hadith is. Cross check, position, yeah. 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 So um, it's I'll crazy. Oh. Alhamdulillah, yeah, Alhamdulillah for Islam. Honestly, it's perfection, bro. I, I was I posted something on Instagram about in the Bibles how they used to pray, different extracts of the position. It's just the same pros, prostration. Mm. Yeah, wash the hands, wash the feet, everything. And I'm like, you see what I mean? Yeah. People forget. You see, uh, look at the Old Testament. They say, yeah, but God wrote that. Jesus wrote. They say, but you said Jesus is God. So, <laughs> what it, it is, what it is. No, <laughs> Jesus wrote that. God wrote that. So you have to go by that. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. SubhanAllah. All right. I think that's good. And With that, that being said, man, before we end it off, let me just say you've shattered my perception of, uh, I guess, in my mind, what I thought it meant to actually be a man. Because, uh-huh. like I said, I've been through a, a very terrible past. And for myself, I had to figure out what it is to be a man. And I thought it was like, oh, a man has to be able to fight. He would defend himself, he has to be a tough guy and all this stuff, but it's like you you've shown me that you're you're a huge guy. You know how to fight, you've been doing it for such a long time. You said you don't even recommend martial arts, like if you like it, do it. If you don't, then don't do yeah. it. I, I mean recommend I mean like if you want to do it, do it. I wouldn't yeah. say you have no, you don't have to. But it's just been a huge like yeah, I'm not I gonna say you, but like a, a mind F. Yeah. Because it's it's just kind of shattered what I thought it actually meant to be like a proper proper man. So no, bro. Like I, I'll get like on back on that. I see a man. You know the ones who sell fruit. I think it was a cereal. I see some post, and he walks with his daughter back home and looks at. And he was doing a selfie off his stand. How proud he was. For me, that's a man, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A janitor doing all that for his kids, and it's like people look down on him, bro. And you're going to tell me a guy who can box and duck and weave and play the shoulder role is more of a man. Why? Why? Like, tell me why. I don't get it. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, bro, I fought. I've knocked people out and been knocked out. Uh, doesn't matter. Like, it does happen. Mm. Take two. Everyone. Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson. Okay, what? Then they're tough guys. Okay, what would they have done if Khalid Ben Wali was around? Or Genghis Khan, or Ali, you know what I'm saying? And they all lost. Like I believe found Islam and Allah, you know. Like, but my point is, uh, what's that man? Then, then you're going to disrespect the Prophet, peace be upon him, when you see what he was like. Look at other prophets. Not all of them were like fighters, tough guys. 
you know okay there's Musa but look at Ayub Suleiman like look at some of the uh, they were like very humble look at Isa yeah. what, where's the story of Isa being tough nowhere and who's the Messiah who's coming back who's chosen to come wow. back Isa and he's still alive the and who's only the only still two alive. people in, never been touched by Shaitan when they're born Isa and Maryam wow. everyone else got touched oh my God. so but when do you ever see a story of Isa being strong tough fighting not one I've seen or heard of and he's the one he's to come back and defeat. Sure. Yeah, and you'd think it'd be Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon you, you'd think it'll be uh, Musa, the one punch, you remember? He killed a companion or something. Yeah. But it's Isa. Whoa. Not one story of being a physically tough guy at all. Isa's very soft kind of personality, loving, like uh, calm, healing people. So there's your answer to that. So if people say tough, if a Christian says it, show them Jesus and Isa to the Muslim. So I just thought of that right now live actually. It's Isa, like, look at his character. I can't think of one type of tempo or anything. Can you? No. In any narration. I've never heard of anything with Isa. Yeah, no. The, Musa, the yeah. thing is just defeating Yusuf, no. But uh, def especially Isa, no. Very yeah. peaceful, chilled kind of person, it seems. Yeah. You know, so uh, there you go. And it's, it's, who's going to say he's not a man? Yeah. Who Allah's chosen him to be the Messiah to come back and defeat? Well, yeah. that's... Yeah. Hmm. Isa's still alive. Allah. SubhanAllah, he's still... He's, you know what I'm saying? Allah took him till he comes, but that's uh, that's powerful, bro. I want to address this before we wrap up too. Why do you think a lot of people are atheists today? And you try to. I don't talk think that it's. I think uh, they don't respect the other religions. I think they're lost. They've seen the flaws in religions, but they're so fearful of Islam and they don't like it. They'll find a reason why. But those same people, bro, when a plane's gonna crash, they all say, "Oh God, help me." Yeah. Yeah. Put a gun to their head. Bring a gangbang and see what they say. It's like with feminists. They say yeah. they don't want a man, but then you know, after, what, 40 years, they're like, oh, like, I, I wish I would have got married. I wish I would have oh. had kids. Look at the Muslims who suffered in Guantanamo Bay, innocent Muslims during that trial. Tortured. I know stories of people that electrocuted their testicles, sexual assault in them, hard, blazing heavy metal, 24-7, and lights in your eyes. Bro, I'm telling you, it's... Still doing Salah. I saw a story of one guy who goes, we didn't even know the direction. We just closed our eyes and we did Salah. They went, shut up, shut up. And they were doing it. Allah. Put an atheist in that situation. They'll pretend they're Muslim or whatever. Christianity, they'll fake. Bro, that's res the resolve of a believer. Believe me. And you know what I'm saying? There you go, another tough guy there. Bro, in the Soviet war with Afghanistan, yeah? In the 80s when they invaded. The tanks were coming back to the Soviet uh, bases and they said they'd always have a hand left. No corpse, just a hand on the tank because people trying to stop it. They're brave, like Afghani, like warriors. Small kids in that hand. All right, show me uh, these UFC guys or who do that? Or a martial artist. Who does that? I know I wouldn't. There's an old saying. He goes, we'd look down the barrel of the gun and see the eye of them standing right go come. Bro, these are guys in war, skinny, fat. Just, you know, bro, that's men. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, so what's your definition of a man? Like, learning a martial art, what does that mean? Our uh, dads couldn't do uh, Bro, I know men who work hard, who bring, like, uh, so you're going to disrespect, like, a, a Shamsi, a Mufti Mik, this Hamza guy, uh, all these scholars. Do you think they know how to do a push up? Ben Baz or hmm, whoever, you know? Shakes, I don't know who the biggest scholars are, so bear with me, I'm not like a... But they're, uh, probably they've never done a user treadmill in their life. But how are they not men? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So Define that. Like, so then what is a man? A man, just probably, a man is to be responsible for what he does, protect and be the best example he can be for people around him, whether it's family, kids, if you're married, friends, and be a man of honor. Just be, honestly, ob obey God. And do what God says. That's being a man. Where does it say to in the Quran or Sunnah to do MMA or boxing? It says it doesn't say anything. Like it doesn't that. say anything. It says they used to train and wrestle, but they do archery, horse riding. Mm -hmm. I think the wrestling one's a debated one, but it's archery, horse riding, some swimming, some sabre wrestle. But where does it say do it? So you got to look at that. If it was such a big thing, we'd say do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Prophet was actually the perfect embodiment of both Dina and Dunya. So he had these capabilities, but he was also soft. He knew how to soften with his family, be more romantic, be more, I guess, 
Yeah, how, how, which position? Where was the prophet when he died? What was the last things he was doing? He was with Aisha, yeah, he was laying on her. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nowadays, people, oh, tough guy, I go out. My you gotta see that, bro. Khadija yeah. was, he was w living off her. So where's these red pill guys? So what are they gonna say about that? She was earning. He worked for her. No, am I wrong? No, you're right. So uh, it is what it is, yeah. and. Uh, People just forget easy, bro. And again, it's culture of the time. It'll change yeah. in about a year or two, bro. Everything changes. Yeah, yeah. work well, okay, like I love it. I like to be big, bro. I've got a big head. If I look skinny, <laughs> I look like a lollipop. Everyone's <laughs> different, bro. But if I wear a suit, I look like a bouncer. You wear a suit, you look smart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone's got their flaws. When you've got a nose my size, you have to have a big head, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My brother's different. Everyone's got their own. Like, you say my dad's not a man. He never thought, bro, how... Uh, what do you mean? He it's because he gave us the opportunity to come in London, develop, live a good life. I'm not born on the street. I'll live good. You know what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah. What's the, this? It's just this new thing. And like, bro, half the guys who push that, bro, stuff like I don't like saying it. They were not. I could test them in seconds and put them in our mats with a 57 kg Dagestani. And let's see if they're gonna back or this way, bro. <laughs> But do what you want to do and have your hobby, badminton, whatever it is. There's no such thing as a self -comment. Bro, like I said, I see like Mufti Mink, people love him, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mufti Mink got muscles and stuff like that. It's just, everyone likes him. I think Cardi B follows him, is it? Or Nicki Minaj, one Nicki of them. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, but yeah, but she follows him, why? People just love him. I'm not saying he's the most annoying, but, but he's got nice quotes, kafar-like. Everywhere he goes, he smiles, people respect him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? He's never once acted tough throwing a punch or got muscles on him. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. fake alpha, never, never yeah, do. I don't need to. Me, Sonny Bill Williams, a brother. Phew, makes me look small. Samoan, strong, tough, muscular, softest, humblest guy you ever meet. Rugby World Cup champion, bro. Rugby guys are tough, bro. Not like NFL, like the Americans. No head guards, no like, you know, um, Shoot. Uh, Shoot. Shield. Yeah. strong. Wow. And Samoans, bro. Maui's very one of the strongest race I've met. Everyone's big, tough. They're like a very uh, aggressive race. Yeah, he's the most. You go see him. Oh, doesn't act. Doesn't act anything. Real tough guys, bro, are the most humble people in the world. Why? Because they've been humbled. Everyone's been knocked out or beaten up once. It's the ones who don't know how. The loud ones. They've never fought. I can tell you if they fought. It's the how loud and you've. Every fighter has been humbled in that ring or in training. There's always a tougher guy, bro. I swear, I've got a 57 kg Dagestani. That boy's skinny. He's, bro, he picks up grown men and slams them on the head. Technique wrestling. If you saw him, you wouldn't even think anything. So, his technique is just what he knows. He's wrestled since a kid. Smart. Oh, I realized this when I first tried Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, <laughs> yes, me too. Bro, I had this, this little girl. She was maybe like five feet tall, probably weighed like half my weight, and she just put me in this headlock. Well, I was like this, about to just pass and you're out. you're like this. Yeah, yeah. Just hanging off arms. After that, I, like, I didn't know what to feel. I, I felt embarrassed. I felt humiliated. <laughs> but at the same time, I loved it. I was like, yo. Like, we all did that. My first crazy. class ever BJJ, which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, before everyone goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start. I was waiting for that. <laughs> uh, I went, I was a big guy, bounce. And I went, and this skinny kid was hanging off my arms, tapping me left, right. And said, I was going, what is this? I want to kill him. But I loved it, bro. Technique, it was Helio Gracie. Like, Hoyce Gracie is a very good friend of mine. He lives in Torrance, California, the first UFC champ. Awesome. Like a brother of mine, yeah? His father invented this style. It was for the smaller man to weak. defend, to hang with a bigger man. Not to win, just to nullify him. And it, that was what it was for, and he did. So you go. There's the beauty. So uh, my point is, uh, Easter on. If you like to train, do it. It's a week. I love it. It's my passion. I've got friends who are my closest friends who play cricket their whole life. I've got a close friend who does nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. I've got friends who are just fat. Uh, I'm trying to tell them, but just don't do anything. One guy is just funny. He goes, just don't get involved with me and my food. He just doesn't do anything. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Successful does his own thing. It is what mm -hmm. it is, bro. Yeah. Who's going to say he's not a man? And where's these times come nowadays? You look at Tony Soprano, bro. Those kind of things. You just make one phone call, he'll kill you. Yeah. No? Yeah. El Chapo's a skinny, short guy. Yeah. But a dangerous guy. No one cares. I used to see his cartels and these programs, Mexicans. Bro, vicious, small. So what is it? Like, what's martial arts going to do? Just if you like it, do it. If you don't do it, I don't say push and do it. No. I'd say for kid boys, 
discipline's good. Whatever sport, sport gives you discipline. Mm -hmm. For that reason, if they're out of ruling, get them off the computer games, yes. But they can do what they want. I like, don't just, you have to be, when you pressure them, they're going to go the other way. I have kids all the point. time and their parents are too much. I can see the kids are going to get stressed later. You know what I mean? They're yeah. like too many yeah. iPad babies nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm, I'm to blame. Sometimes my kids are really, his iPad, stop talking. <laughs> ah, they're running around, just watch this. You have to, bro. Mm. <laughs> Nowadays, it's just, man. It's easier. It's easier. <laughs> you know, when you're out in public, you have to go, shh. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, bro. I look forward to that. I have one more question, man. Sure, With your daughters, do you have them, like, go to normal school or do they do homeschooling? Normal school, yeah. Do you don't want to do the homeschooling? What if you were in the West? Bro, oh, look. We went to public schools, and I'm not going to say all, but the ones who went to all girls and all boys and the strict Muslim families, subhanAllah, they came out the worst. Really? I'm telling you, I don't want to make it really, I was shocked. My sister went to a public school in a council estate. It's called the projects we went to. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Council estates, they're called. She chose by herself to wear hijab as a teenager. Wow. And my mom doesn't. I'm telling you the truth. My sister chose. To this day, she wears it herself. We, Why? that's where we were upbringing. We loved it. And she just wanted to, and she read it that way. As kids, we never did anything like that. But my mom goes, go away, do what you want, but just know there's rules and this. Don't have boyfriends. Go, don't do this and that. That's her race. It's all about upbringing, bro. I saw guys, clock up, stay at home. You can't go on the bikes. Now these boys are drinking alcohol nearly eight. I know I go guys, but I saw who are strict girls who wore hijabs. Now just wild. They'd sneak off. I don't yeah. want that, bro. I want them to be able to talk to me. I'd say this is right and wrong, but anything always talk to me. Mm. I won't be approved, but I don't want them to be fearing me, bro. There's a difference. Yeah. Because God forbid the worst thing, I'd rather have them say I, I, that I've, you know, uh, someone, uh, this is happening. I'd be really disappointed, but I want them to know like I'm there because it's very important, bro. Before I'd say, ah, I'm but it doesn't work, bro. Yeah. It does not work. You have to have that respect. Being that tough, angry does not work. I've seen it hundreds of cases when I was younger and those parents and the boys. And when I asked my brother, how are they doing now? Because he's doing, I said, what? They used to be like this. And they think, why is Tam pushing this? I mean, like, you could do this, you're there. Like, the, uh, you see how it turbulence ch change? Because uh, it's upbringing and like, you have, there's a, you can't be, my dad told me, bend a tree while it's young, but don't bend it till it snaps. You know what I'm saying? Just know, like, in a way. That's the best way to do it, bro. So, um, yeah, like, school doesn't matter where you go, bro. It doesn't matter. It's all about the upbringing and the respect. In the West, it's different, yeah, I get, but here, yeah, bro, they, they even teach Arabic at four years old, Thursday and Fridays. Uh, there's nothing like that agenda. So, I went to an English school. They used to do English Christian assemblies in the morning. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, and my mom said, like, you can't do this, can't do that. But... Uh, Bro, never once. So, for me, again, I go back to upbringing. Yeah. That's why when you spread the message and give someone Islam, do it in the beautiful way. Yeah. Steps, baby steps. Don't push it hard. Like, that's why I get scared for Tate. All these people are going to push him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, there's no need. Yeah. Actually, I think your upbringing is somewhat similar to mine in, in that sense because my mom was the same exact way. She told me, you know, like about Surah Yusuf, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet alayhi salam, all these stories. And she was fairly lenient with me and trusting. I went to a Catholic school. So, um, Sometimes it was. Sometimes it's better for you, bro. You'll be shocked. My yeah. mom went to a convent in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. But she's proper on theme. My mom is like, no, she's nearly a heart. Mama, everything in Islam I learned from her. But oh. their parents took them to these kind of schools. Discipline. Yeah. It wasn't to learn any agenda. Yeah. My point is, it is upbringing. And the thing is, my mom was lean, like, go where you want, do it, but I trust you. And I was like, yeah. So I'd feel this. I wasn't scared of police, I was scared of my mom. It's weird. Wow. Because mm. I was like, she does so much like... So if I'm like, ah, oh, you're this, that, bro, what are they going to do? They're going to go against you. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, I've seen it. I'm sure there's probably case studies in it. Yeah. Every kid who had a strict dad or parent became so bad. Yeah. So when you put them in homeschooling, bro, they need to socialize. They need to understand life. They become robots. I knew kids who were like homeschooling science. My sister got PhDs at 12. You know, it's like nerds. Yes, Baba, I know, 25, algebra 6. And I'm like sitting there with my snot hanging. They were like these nerds, bro. <laughs> it's all well-being, but they can't socialize. They become... Like, it's weird. Just, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. let them, bro. In. Kids are kids, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let there be kids, bro. Don't put a burden, bro. Like the prophet used to love the sound. So, so he used to love the sound of kids running in the masjid. Yeah. You know, there's a charm on his back when he's a prey. Where's this new generation of this mutawas? Get the kid. Where's this come from? Why is she in there? She's a girl. Where? The prophet used to let kids. You know what I mean? So yeah. go buy what we know. Don't go buy this new uh, culture. These are cultures. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Boom. Yeah. It, it reminded me of something Hamza said. It, it slipped my mind, unfortunately. But oh, yeah. Assume the best in others and they'll assume the best in themselves, right? Like 100%. When you, when you, and suspicions are as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, I mean, that's the hardest one to get. Suspicion. Just trust in Allah and you'll, they'll, they'll be more, you know what I'm saying? They'll be like more prone to you and stuff. Mm. Examples are most, most important. Because you don't yeah. have them on leash. It's like they choose to be a good kid. Yeah. Just do your best. And what what they will do, they will do. But if you're going to lock them away and this and that and be tough, they're going to look and say, what is that about? Why? People are going to play games. But you say, no, I trust you. I trust you. You're my daughters. I know you're good. You know what's right and wrong. And anything, this, trust me. That's the best way to be. Believe me. Yeah. From experience. Trust me, bro. I was around everyone. The ba- I was all these fake red pill guys. They wish they could, like I could say I was about that that cringy thing, yeah. <laughs> and never, well, you couldn't influence me, bro. Because of my mom, I was like oh, this and that, the respect and you know. So upbringing and the trust they had. If they, were, I, I saw the difference with the other kids who were always in Quran classes. This that push push, never out, no friends, not allowed out. And now, bro, I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them leave the dean. Scary, bro. A lot of them leave the yeah. dean. Some of these people, bro, I don't even want to go. They're asking about yourself tomorrow. I don't want to talk to them. I'm just, if they're like that, I, I have no respect. Reverts are different. When there's someone like that, I know who knows who's been around. Uh, for me, my respect's gone. I can't sit with them. I'm like that. I just can't. There's nothing to sit with. I've, I've lost respect. It's done. I'd rather sit with a criminal Kufar guy, Westerner, because he's, he's, he doesn't know better. But when it's a Muslim born who's around it and knows better and it acts like a degenerate, bro, I don't want to sit with him. I'm just, that's me. I'm just harsh like that. I'm like, you know, I don't want to see you. Nah. They all know, like, oh, yeah, I see Tam on this thing. I said, yeah, but don't give him my number. I don't want to meet him. Because I'll just tell him straight and I'll offend them. I'm like that sometimes. I once slapped a friend. He tried to drink beer in front of me. I slapped him across the face. It's bad. <laughs> but I was like, what are you doing this for? Showing off because they're like, like Ugh, and he cried, he got upset. But I shouldn't have done that. But I'm like, why are you trying to, like, what are you doing? Why are you buying a beer in front of me? You should have shame and like, trying to be like English and stuff. It's a stupid thing to do. But at the same time, that's how I am. I hate it, bro. It's my, that's my pet peeve. <laughs> when you see Muslims holding like this on a, a Facebook, like bottles of shampoos. My time, you'd hide your sin. You'd be ashamed. Nah, they don't care. What about like shisha? <clears throat> it's deb- look. It's culture. It's, co- it's debatable, no? I, I'm not a scholar. Mm. I believe smoking is not allowed. Her, her, you, yeah? yeah. Now, People say cigars, you don't know hell. I'm not a scholar, you know? It's the, like the music thing. I believe music is not allowed, certain things, but I believe some people say beats, it depends. Obviously, Tupac, this is not allowed. But it, I'm not a scholar, you know, it's debatable. There's some clear verses and there's some things go to scholars, so well, yeah. I don't like to comment on them. Yeah. I have different opinions, but I look, try to look into it and see. They're not so easy, clear cut. Yeah. She's just so common in the Middle East, it's hard to say why is there and what. Mm. But then again, it's, what's the word, intoxicant, and it's bad for you, then what about mayonnaise? What about sugar? I sugar, eat a lot of bad. Caffeine. I'm doing haram. Literally, I know, I'm eating a lot of sugar. So, uh, it's hard to clarify. So no. I can't say clear-cut. I'm no, I'm no uh, yeah. man to say that. Of course, none of but us. But clear-cut things is alcohol, pork, zina, adultery, gambling, riba, backbiting, mm. stealing, murder. Mm harming someone, striking their face. We know the clear-cut ones. Yeah. When it comes to this, don't, my mom used to say, don't complicate Islam. Mm. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, I got a question. The whole thing about the striking the face being haram, how do you manage that? In yeah, I, I was saying, for me, it's haram. Yeah. For me, it's haram. I did it, it's haram. Fresh or fine. Now, some will say competition is different. But for me, wrestling's fine and jiu-jitsu, but for me, it's haram. I did it. It's a haram. Now, teaching someone, sparring is different because you have head guards, in my opinion, and it's not intent to hurt. It's touching and moving and getting defenses up. And it's more of a competition like archery. 
They used to spar like this, Sahaba, no? They used to train with the archery and the whatever, how to train. You might have got knocks here and there. But intentionally harming someone is a different thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, for me, MMA and the boxing is haram. I can't lie. I did it. To yeah. professionally do it. I think I think it's called something else. The one they, with, with the swords. Fencing. Yeah, but fencing is a sport now. But in those days, they train. Like, yeah. uh, they train yeah. for war, no? Yeah, I just and the archery is the bone. Yeah, sorry, you're fencing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sword training. Sword but training. they, they yeah, train yeah. for war. They prepare. There's many uh, narrations. So, yeah. But they're preparing for a certain task. Preparation and training, it's not intentional. It's not harming. It's... Let's work on strategies, move. Like, this is going to happen, yeah? Mm. Football, you're going to harm someone, kick them. You might basketball, but get punched in the face. The intention is not for that. It's to perfect your art. But professionally doing it, for me, it is haram, yeah, because it's clear-cut. Striking is not allowed. Now, some say it's for the competition value, but striking the face is clear. Wrestling is okay. But, uh, yeah, uh, body sort sparring, cry, maybe, yeah. But I know it's not allowed. But training it, there's no problem with it. And perfecting yourself and being that is... Uh, it's no, it's no problem for me at all. But striking and anything really goes in like actual self-defense in like a survival situation, right? Yeah, of course, survival yeah. is different. I'm, right. We mean like me fighting in Las Vegas to punch right. someone in the face for the money and people like, screaming. Yeah. 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 How's it halal? Yeah, in a, in a, in a casino with ringles. Yeah. Let's yeah. not lie. Of course. Yeah. Arrow, of arrows out showing. Yeah, yeah I'm not gonna lie, mm. but I don't lie. My gym's mixed. There's music being played. I'm not gonna say I'm perfect. I know what's not allowed and allowed. I know. So you don't change the religion of Allah. I, I know you're it's mad enough. You're mad enough to. I accept. To I have that. People say I have a mixed gym, but it's you take steps. You take time. It's not that easy. Mm. You, take, you know. But so, I know what's yeah. right and wrong. I, I will never lie and go no no. I know it's wrong and right. I know it's not allowed to stare at women. Men have like I know it's a sin. Even so, to me, like. Posing topless, like I, lo I stopped doing a loads of pics. It's not good. Well, it's haram. A lot of your arrows covered, yeah. But what is the intention behind it? Yeah, it's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. I'm not a hypocrite, bro. I don't lie. Subhanallah, too many. I know if I do many, I know, mm. but I don't deny it. I won't make an excuse. I mean, no, I, I don't make an excuse. Music's a debatable one about string, the beats. What's it called? The duff. The duff. duff yeah, yeah. Then. Many opinions I've spoke to guys, st well studied scholars. Some say, yeah, it depends on lyrics. Some say, no. So it's a very debated subject. Again, why might I differ? Anyway, I'm, I don't get motivated, influenced by music, but some do. So then, you know, it's a long, it's a very hard discussion to say. When I was younger, you put DMX on, yeah, I want to beat someone up. So then I said, no, I understand why it's haram. I used to be young and listen to R. Kelly. I thought, yeah, let me get a girl and go for a cruise. Now I understand why it's haram. Yeah. What is it? How it influences you? Mm. House music, everyone's like this pillar. So I get it too. It's, you know? But again, there's so many things where the specialists, they all sit and concur. But there's some things which are clear cut and some which are, you've got to go to other opinions. So people say, well, free mixing. One guy was saying to me, uh, they're Mecca, they're free mixing. I said, that's not free mixing. They have mehrams, the women, and they're doing it, you know? Mm. But I'm saying, if you're in a hospital, your work is no free mixing. It's a professional thing. Yeah. Free mixing, we know, sitting with girls, chilling on, that's free mixing. I know it, you know? Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like hijab. You can't force hijab. Tell me where in the Quran it says it's a punishment for hijab. What's the punishment for hijab? I'll ask any three of you. For not wearing hijab, what's the punishment? Allah. There's, not a, there's not a specified punishment. There isn't, yeah. is there? With Allah. Yeah, but there's no specified <laughs> punishment. There is for everything else. Exactly. It's in our adultery. So you know what I'm saying? And then narration. So hijab, so we know it's a fraud, but also it can't be. There's, you can't force it on the woman because there's no punishment for not wearing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you've got to let everyone. It's so deep. Let the sisters do it how they need to do it and make it easy on them. You know, we, my brothers have it easy compared to sisters. Yeah. No, the women have to go with burqas or they wear hijabs in the summer. And the men have to ask permission. Look, bro, we, let's not complain. The women, you have to respect the Muslim sisters out there too. We have it much easier, bro. Much easier. Yeah. What, navel to knee? Very so true. My That's point usually going to be covered anyway. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> train, my point is, like, uh, I wouldn't wear a vest in a masjid, but you're allowed to show your shoulders in a Mecca. It's just courtesy. It's Islamic courtesy. You know what I'm saying? So let's don't get too deep in this thing because you end up either going too extreme or too crazy. Yeah. Just go by the fards. 
and so and just know what you know and then leave the rest and just based on logic if it influences you and does bad for you stop it that's why there's a hadith where the Prophet mentions do not be extreme in matters of faith 100% you know, and the middle path is already established so doing more that's than that you can't be more pious than the Prophet you can't be more explanatory yeah. and uh, there's no clear cut verse on the smoke and these things so that's why I said yeah, mm. there's clear verses and then there's ones you have to research so stick by the clear the vast thing yeah. And Allah knows best and the try your best. The scholars actually just don't, don't say it's halal. Yeah, 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 that's justifying it. See, the scholars have it's disliked. The, we know it's a very disliked thing, but don't promote it. That's all I'm saying. Like, everyone to know, like, it is what it is. What can you do? We have to learn and just better ourselves every day. Yeah, I was going to say the scholars have talked about the smoking and the cigars and the shisha, and most of them are not intoxicants, they're not khamar. So they won't say it's haram because of that. But a lot of scholars, the ones that say it is haram, those select few. They'll say it's because it's extravagant. It's like useless spending, money that could go elsewhere. And there's a clear cut eye on the Quran where it says Allah does not like those that spend in extravagance, like those that just waste money on things that you don't need to. Mm. Right. So yeah, but then that's a justice. That's true, but yeah. define that. Right. It's what case you by need case basis, yeah. or what do you want? Ninety mm. percent of things you have is what you want. What you want, yeah. facts. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? But yeah. everything Allah is the most merciful. Everything is simple as well. Yes. So. These things you you implode. Mm. Bro, I'm older. I've been around. I've, I've been extreme. I've been lost. I've been it all. I remember groups in London. His, there was the crazy. I was around those eras. I saw them all. <laughs> I've seen them all, bro. I've seen mm. all these characters. I've been around it all. I've seen it. And I've seen what happens. It's those ones you just like the prophet said. Well. Be just be easy. Make it easy. Yeah. Yeah, Don't. Well, that's the most merciful. Is how many times he mentions this. Every prayer, how many times? Look at the examples of the woman who fed the water, the prostitute, or yeah, yeah. Abu Lahab. People like that. Who was the one who opened the heart of Hind? And these characters who reverted after the one who ate Hamza's heart. Who, op- who ate Hamza's heart? Oh, it was um, Hind. I don't, I don't remember the name, but I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Look at these people that did this. I can still forgive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so just don't um, overcomplicate Islam. Do not yeah. do that. There's a hadith that I, I read a few days ago where the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he said that uh, there are many things which are clear cut, and then there's a, a gray area. Mm. And he said it's best to just go with the clear cut and leave the gray areas aside because it's not that you can't do the things that are in the gray area. It's just that by doing these things, it can Put you at risk to doing the things which are haram. Yeah, if at least, look, it's it's such a hard topic, but again, there's people of knowledge, scholars, and there's so many different opinions. Allah knows best. Allah knows this will come in the future. He would have made it clear cut, in my opinion, if it was such a demanding thing. The ones which we know, we know for reasons. Riba, debts, gambling, what it leads to. Chasing debts, getting to junkies, addictions. A riba taken from the put like murder. Oh, it's all straight Simple, uh, yeah, yeah. fornication, mm. uh, non marriage, fatherless family. Everything you can see. Mm. These things are different. So um, stay the stress it's away. It's been made simple. Yeah, even the process I mentioned for a woman, it's like if she does her father, guards her chastity, obeys her husband, right? She can enter gender from whatever gate she chooses. Yeah. Bro, but imagine what you were saying about the music. It's like there's differences of opinion. But let's say, okay. Let's say instrumental, no words, no nothing is halal. It's you can do it. It's a great area. So someone starts listening to that, and then I don't know where they're like, oh, this is nice, and then it just keeps leading them to like more music. That's you know now you have it ones with vocals. Still talking about love, but it it has vocals now. Yeah, but and then it gets to the point where they're listening to like hip hop again. That's the same person who lowers their gaze, but then you say don't go out in public because then he sees one girl who's beautiful and then just starts stalking. We have self restraint as well, bro. We're not dogs, we're not animals, we can control ourselves. The Prophet, peace be upon him, when he came home and he saw Aisha or the friends of the Prophet's wife dancing and playing this duf and singing, and someone said, he said, let them be. No? Look at the hadiths. So that's the Prophet. Are you going to question him? No, sir. So there's many. Go look into these. That's very true. Let them be. Mm-hmm. So. We were going to question him and he let them be. And uh, He's a messenger. He's a prophet. So, don't come. I know what you're saying, but again, we're not dogs like, uh, it's like that means don't go in a public place. Because if I see a girl and 
you know, some guys go one stairs, okay, so I'll just stay for minutes, yeah. yeah. We're, we're not animals, have self restraint. <laughs> yeah. You feel like that fast. That's what Prophet says, no? Peace be upon him. Feel free the urge fast. No, I guess this where it's like the whole haram, halal thing, it's, it's different case by case. It's different case by case, but honestly, it complicates things and it gets too deep and you're going to have the halal haram police online. But they're just going to do that for no reason. Sit there. It's, it's bro, there's bigger issues in life than to worry about if a shisha tobacco flavor is okay or a beat to a bit of like to a nasheed, bro. Let's worry about the real things. <laughs> Praying time, being good, give us out of the car, raising children, being an example. If you stay there, you're not going to move anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's not clear cut for a reason. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I believe there's a hadith. I, I don't know. I haven't seen like the, the, the chain of narration, but um, uh, my, my teacher told me about it recently. He said the Prophet Sallam said that difference of opinion, ikhtilaf is a mercy for my ummah. You know, the fact that there are scholars who come to different conclusions and all that is actually a mercy. It's a rahmah for us. Alhamdulillah. And those people, those haram police, it's a real disease, to be honest. Like, it's, it's actually sick. Boredom, man. bro. It's boredom. They look for anything. It's just, uh, you can't take it serious, bro. Yeah. You know that, that's the problem. It's, it's hard not to, especially for like people who, who value the opinions of others. Personally, I, I really don't care anymore. When but. I get haram police, bro, I, can, I silence them in about 30 seconds. <laughs> I, I question them back what they're doing. Yeah. Everything, yeah. And they just, they just don't do it. And I don't want to say it on camera, but there's so many things I get back on them. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, uh, okay, let's just l- leave the West. Let's go to Muslim countries. <laughs> why are you in a Western country? Why in a Kafar country? You can annoy them. Yeah. Why? Yeah. But why? But why? Why are you wearing Western clothes? How did the Prophet dress? How did the Prophet dress? <laughs> <laughs> why have you got a big beard and not trim this? Why? <laughs> but no. Why? Should we follow the way of the Prophet? Why don't people do that? Carry yes. miswak all the time. Please be one. No, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, like, where's this uh, innovation cloak? The innovations, innovations, innovations. Why are you well. knife, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're on the right hand. Why are you still floor? No, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Let's go into it really deep. Things we know how he did. No, these uh, gray areas no one can discuss, no one knows much about. These are things we know what he did, how he acted. Do it. Why are you not doing it? You know? Yeah. Why you got a fade? Why don't you have one length? Shave it all off or... You know how the hair should be. Yeah. A step. Or all trim this, keep the beard grow. Miss Walk, this that, why are you using a toothbrush? We met a brother in Mecca, the one I was telling you about, he was saying that he didn't understand when uh, everyone was saying, uh, you have to do the sunnah, 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 sunnah. It's like, we should strive for it. But you have these scholars who are just saying, oh no, you have to eat with the right hand. But then they're over here driving a Porsche. It's like, did the, did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, drive the Porsche? And what if they're left handed? Yeah. What if they're left handed? I always think about that. What like when they when they eat? Some people left handed. I mean, I don't, eating I don't think requires delicacy with your hands. No, 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 bro. No. Left handed, they, they can't function with the right. They can't write shaitan anything. Shaitan eats so, with left, right? So. so they say shaitan. You will clean with your left hand and the right, and you. Eat. They don't say shaitan. that's the hand to clean and defecate. And yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever, but um, again, like, there's look, no context. Yeah. It's not like listen. My mom always said it's simple. They're simple. Five people do the. Bro, how many of these people who talk around the police even give us a cut? No, honestly, check their salaries. How many are living mortgages? Yeah, that's a big one. That's you know what I'm saying, one. bro? It's like, I don't get into it, bro. It's just like kid stuff, honestly. And it's like, I don't mean in a offensive way, but brother, in such a deep, beautiful religion, how merciful Allah was to the prostitute who gave water, to the. Uh, so many narrations of how he forgave and Allah's merciful and we're worrying about I don't know listen to a beat or if you're wearing gold or if you're wearing silver gold and silk's clear I think (laughs) no (laughs) it is gold and silk's clear yeah that's clear Uh, that's a clear one I like gold watches but I can't wear anything or silk but um silver no problem where's the problem silver um, yeah. Uh, another one when they say earrings, yeah, because don't be like a woman. It's a feminine thing. Mm-hmm. Have brothers, what does it say? But I said that men should be a wem- don't look like women and don't. F- that's why that's a feminine thing. Vanity, yeah. yeah, but they have this thing in the old days. They put their eyes. Cool. Cool. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah, you wear that now. A lot of men go, oh, bro, you're like a woman. No. So debate it. 
Yeah. You're going to the West, that's fe feminine. Holding yeah. a man's hand. Oh, bro, that, that threw me off yeah. when I went yeah? to Egypt. But look man. at stories and narration of the Sahaba. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But for us, it's like, oh, whoa. So let's talk about all this. It's, bro, don't bother. It's, it's different. Could you marry a younger girl now? Are women like the ages of the women of those days now? The uh, maturity, they're not. You know, those days, people will go to war at nine, ten. Mm -hmm. People were adults. There was no toys. There's no school. Yeah. What's a toy? There was no... Your child, puberty, adult. But nowadays, it's different. Yeah. Bro, we're at 10 like that. Uh, it's not... I didn't know what I was doing. Go to some country at 10, they're like smart, earning money. Yeah. So, there's a debate on the Prophet Aisha's age and uh, peace be upon everything like that. But we, you can't relate things to now. You cannot. Yeah. A lot of it does depend. Prophet had how many wives? Uh, uh, Seven once, or nine? Mo nine. Most at the time was nine. Nine. Can yeah. we? No. no. So, w why? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you can debate anything, bro. These people just, some things are related, some th things are not. Some things are not mentioned for a reason. All I know is this clear cut hadith, it's a Sahi one. He came back in, I think, Abu Bakr, or someone was questioning it, and his, his maids, and they're dancing with their wives, and something was happening. And he goes, let them be. And they were singing in the I'm telling you, I see it many times. Yeah. Mm. So then say something about that. They won't. So it's, don't overcomplicate Islam. Yeah. Especially for like, like people like us, you know, regular people. Like these matters are so like. Minuscule. It, and brother, we're in a time. Sorry to answer. Everything's changed. Islam's not changed, but what I mean, we have to adapt to society, but bringing Islam into it, not changing Islam, but society is different. In those days, there was more idol worship. In those days, there was more wars. In those days, there was more, uh, it's different times now. You have to, you know what I'm saying? You can't, it's different. Yeah. There's cars, there was no cars then. Yeah. There's planes. In those days, like, you can post something and now the whole world sees it. You know what I'm saying? But then again, is that the message? Do people in the Amazon still get the message? But it's promised to everyone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Allah, let Allah be the judge of all things. Just do what you can do. Don't overcomplicate. I saw this when I was younger with certain guys. And now they're like alcoholics in hooker houses. Mm -hmm. I said prostitute. I'm telling you. I'm always like that, sure. It's what it is. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm, it's fucking real at the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're going to get a lot of a halal haram police. Oh, this, that, but... If they've got a problem, we can sit and debate with them they're and I'll expose them. You know? But I can, I can uh, uh, get back at them in two seconds. Mm. I forgot mm. what I saw. Is if it's a hadith or in the Quran, but it said that Islam was supposed to be easy. Or there make you it this, easy. Well, like you said, uh, I, I don't want like, to wrongly uh, state the hadith, but it is... Uh, my mom always used to say it to me. Don't make... Don't overcomplicate it. Like, don't delve too deep into it. It's a set basics. And just go by those. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, there's many stories in the Quran and all of these. You can see things which wouldn't go now. And they're different, like uh, judgments and things like this. Just look at, uh, read Surah Al Kaf about Musa. Keeps questioning, why did you do this? Yeah. And he goes, if you don't listen to me, like, yeah. he killed uh, someone, didn't he? Like, yeah, the young story, boy. The young yeah. boy and this, that. But there was. If you speak that story now, you're like, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah. a reason. So you can't, it's relatable. You can't go in about this, bro. But subhanAllah, we're speaking in the year 2023 in the most modern city in a time where the world changed about Islam. So this are, alone is rewardable. Yeah. A night of contemplation is like how many nights of prayer? An hour <laughs> of contemplation. An hour, yeah. SubhanAllah. You know what I'm saying? Like so when Allah nights. gives you these, I'm the most merciful, I forgive for anything. Why are you stressed about like these silly topics? Yeah. See what I'm saying? You cannot say to someone, oh, well, again, there's even hadiths on pointing at someone, calling them a non Muslim or this, that. Yeah. It's punishment. Yeah. Backbiting, yeah. punishment. Back, yeah. Yeah. Being offensive, punishment. So that's offensive to someone. So You've got to be careful. Backbiting is clear in the Quran. How often Eating do we backbite? Eating the flesh of your brother. How often do we backbite every day? Every day. Mm. And so, yeah. there you go. So, people just, Islam's perfect and beautiful, but. Let's stop these debates on these things. Yeah. 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 This is actually one of the, I think, the, what drives people sometimes away from Islam when they 100%, see this stuff. 100%. And, Unfortunately. Uh, it's, it's annoying. 
And uh, yeah. I know people have like, that's why no one respects, that's why Andrew Tate is such a movement and the big mullahs who shout, this haram, they don't get respect anymore. Yeah. Because it's haram halal, yeah. haram halal. Yeah. You know, Asha, Allah mentioned the Quran a lot. He's, uh, Hamza was mentioning this. Uh, he mentions a lot about wisdom, hikmah, you know, call to the religion. And even like when you debate with someone, do it wisely. So even if like someone believes that you're doing something haram, it's sometimes not the most wise thing. Just go and like, you know, yell at them, that's haram, that's haram, that's haram. Even if you believe it's haram, Ask yourself, do you really have good intentions? These people online tweeting at you saying this is haram. Do you really have good intentions? On defending, even if he's done something, hiding it for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defending yeah. him. Yeah, whoever, 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 um, I think the hadith says, whoever covers the faults of his brother, Allah will cover his faults. And if you two have a feud, I can lie and say he said good about you and you said good about him to fix it. Yeah. I'm allowed yeah. to lie. Yeah. Yeah. You're allowed to lie to make your wife feel good. Fitna, yeah. To promote her, even if you think she's obese. Say she's beautiful. Now look, lying's haram, no? But you can do it in certain occasions. There's, there's so, hadith mentioning every prohibition has its exception. Yeah, so there you go. Let's, this is how Islam is so simple. It's about making people feel good. What, before we end, I could, we could do a whole topic on halal haram meat and the food of the believers. Yeah. People hate that topic. You can eat the food of the believers, but why? Why can you marry a Christian and Jew, but you can't eat their food? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not against this, but it's like a big topic. Yeah. Again. Bro, I've had this. I was around for a long time, bro, around this Hisbuk Takriya movement and this and that. Guys like Majid Nawaz when he was on Dean. And yeah. I was around those days, bro. I've seen it all. I've seen the biggest topics. I've seen, so people think, oh, like I look like a bit of a dope punch drunk. I've got knowledge. <laughs> I read, bro. I read. I investigate everything. I investigate everything. And I speak to a very uh, knowledgeable guys and I check and I look and I look into things. It's not so easy, bro. So people stop overcomplicating things. You've got your opinion. It's not f straight fact further. It's opinions. Yeah. And it's debatable. Leave it alone. Yeah, maybe be safe. Stay away. Maybe that's one option. It's better perhaps, but yeah. But maybe. But at the same time, don't question, say someone's harm. You don't know. It's not. Yeah. How do you know? It's not clear cut. The clear sins are all in the Quran. I'm sure someone told me all the haram, halal, straight up in the Quran. The ones in the hadiths and sunnahs, there's not clear cut what's haram, haram, or haram, or halal. It's just how to behave and be like the Prophet, the pro ways the Prophet. Yeah. So... If it's not the Quran and these are not clear cut, who we, what are we talking about? Yeah. When it comes to sin, even like, let, let, let's say there's something there's a difference of opinion on, right? You have one yeah. opinion, I have another. You think something's halal, I think it's haram. The way it works is, if I think it's haram and I do it, I'm sinful. Yeah. But if you mm -hmm. think it's halal, I think it's haram and you do it, mm -hmm. you're not sinful because you don't my think point, it's haram. Exactly. So my opinion is like certain things I think is fine. Yeah. Me and my sister have different, but that's why I've read it and learned. So, um, yeah. And yeah. I, I, my research, and I've come to that conclusion. Yeah. Even, see, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so loving and merciful in this regard that he says, he says that the mujtahid, the person who extracts the ruling, if he's wrong, he gets one reward. And if well, he's right, he gets two. You'd have some saying you have to remove every tattoo. Yeah. That's you would, but you don't. Is it still going? Do you know what I'm saying? Three hours. You That's don't have crazy. to. Yeah, so there you go. Don't overcomplicate it to all the brothers. And you'll, yeah. say, you'll, you'll say no because he's wearing this and he's... He's got this. No, I'm not. I'm saying because I've been around to, I've been around knowledge, but all these Dawah guys know me. I yeah. speak to them privately. A lot of people, I don't mention names. I know a lot. I've been yeah. around. I study, I watch, I love it. And I'm proud Muslim to the day I die, inshallah. And, uh, inshallah. But don't overcomplicate because I've seen them coming over. I'm 43 soon. I've been like this the whole time. These other guys, uh, you're going to, there's, you, there's so many little things, bro. There's so many things. Oh, I cut myself this little bit of blood. Crystal, no. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Someone says a mouth, a mouthful of blood. A mouthful, I'll be on a deathbed, bruv. Like, what are you talking? Yeah. See, What's bro, a mouthful of blood? <laughs> Been shot in the head? There was this, there was this book from Imam al Jawzi, Rahimullah, called The Devil's Deception. <coughs> and he actually talks about the hadith where the Prophet mentions that the Christians split into 71 sects and the Jews split into 72, and my Ummah will split into 73 sects. And he goes into, and he said, one of them will be saved. You know, all of them will be of the fire. People think, you know, Sunni, Shia, Sufi, I this. don't know if they'll be off the fire. No, they're not. But you know what he said? He actually, as a scholar, as a contemporary scholar, he researched into who those 12 sects are from authentic scriptures. And he found that they were all groups of people that were extreme. So one of those groups of the 72, these are people, for example, it's explicitly written, they will not shake hands with people. Why? Because they have OCD. Am I touching nudges? Like something impure. Do I have to make also? So they don't touch it. Do you see how extreme that is? 
if you read it, all 72 of them are just, they have some form of religious OCD or using too much logic and just extremism. It's not based in Quran and Sunnah anymore. I, 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 and the Sunnis and Shias. I never thought there'll be a hellfire. There'll be one chosen group who are on the right path. Mm. It doesn't mean there isn't a hellfire. That's what mm. I know. Hellfire is a strong word. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I, there's clear cut ones who'll be in hellfire who did wrong, and people, mm. even the Pharaoh was punished, he couldn't even revert last minute. Yeah. But then there's stories of Hind, who mm. ate Hamza's heart and did this, and they were given a chance, and Khalib and Walid. So you've got to understand, and the woman who was a non Muslim prostitute. So my point is, mm. these examples are there for what? Deterrence. Yeah. And no, motivators. And to show us that there's mm. always. Re- Why would he give us a, um, a deed of a prostitute giving a, water, a, dr- a stray dog water? Show the Rahmah. She hasn't reverted. Mm. She's a prostitute and she gave a dog water. Mm. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So this hellfire in this, bro, we have to be careful. We have to be careful mm. of saying, calling Kufar. Then again, Kufar, how will they be judged? Who says they got, they've been raised in a certain place, they don't know better with the media. Mm-hmm. We cannot, I used to be like, that, oh, this, this. You have to be very yeah. careful. Very careful. Mm-hmm. Then it says backbind. Some say just Muslims or is it all people? Is it heavens under your mother's foot or is it all mothers or just Muslims? Mm. Where, where does it say? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a good point. And even in the Quran, Allah says killing one innocent life is as if you killed all of mankind. Yeah. Not one believer. Yeah. Just one life. Exactly. So we can go into this. and We're going by Quran. Don't come to some scholar. No. Mm-hmm. And go by Quran. So there you go. So even this hell heaven, very careful we have to be with this. I used to be like that. Mm. You don't know. Allah knows best. Allah doesn't know what. They might worship Allah in a way we don't know. Some of the Amazon, they might, you know? You cannot mm. under- comprehend. All I know, whoever's got the message and knows better, we have to fix up, not them. You know what mm. I mean? So uh, the Byzantine Empire, Christians uh, took homage and uh, protected the Prophet. But they never reverted, did he? He didn't revert. So then, w- what can you say? But he helped the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, and that helped Islam come. So how will Allah judge him? Who's going to say he's going to go hellfire? Mm-hmm. Who can be brave enough to say that? Mm-hmm. Huh? Has a Prophet, did the Prophet say anything negative of that man? Nothing. He protected them in the Sahaba. No? So who's going to have enough balls to say he'll be hellfire and revert? Bro. Scary. So that's what I'm saying. We have to tread carefully. Only Allah is a judge. Allah makes every decision, right and wrong. Allah can say anything. Yeah. We're all given tests, 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 tests. But who will be the first to be judged? The Muslims. We're the first to be judged on the day of judgment. Yeah. So there's your answer there, bro. Like uh, People don't look at these examples. Don't look at what scholars say. Look at examples of the Quran and what mm. the Allah says and the Prophet. Peace be upon him. Yeah, and also, like, I read this somewhere that 3% of the Quran is rules and regulations. 97% is just manners, ethics, examples. Stories. Examples, yeah. Examples. Like the man one. Like, look at Isa. Mm. No one ever has heard any, like in that modern day, Alpha. Tell me, you'll never hear anything. Yet yeah, he's the chosen one to come back. Yet everyone focuses on 3%. The halal haram. It's just bro, it's just a. Uh, it reminds me of this thing where Aisha radiallahu anha she said if the first things revealed were halal haram, then no one would be Muslim. And women should be locked up. But well, who's um, How do we know how to pray like the Prophet? Aisha's her hadiths. Most probably, pro, most influential scholar is a woman. Highest yeah. hadith, yeah. yeah. yeah so she, uh, there, there you go, Mr. Red Pill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think she's like the third. Um, the third on the list of like who narrated the most ahadith. Yeah, but I mean, as in everything he did. Yeah. Who knew better than Aisha? Yeah. And as a who? woman, right? Yeah. Who was around him in ways no one? Who knew how he did the wudu? Who knew how he stood? How he treated his wives. Yeah, but yeah. like the, the exact way he'd like would stand and pray like his mannerisms. Yeah. Aisha, so that's how vital she is. And like they say she was a child of marriage, but yeah, she's a scholar. So why is she not scarred? Yeah. <laughs> you scars you. They'll say Stockholm Syndrome. Stuff for Allah, but my point is, again, it's not relatable, bro. And uh, just go by what we know. And this, mm. Allah's the most merciful. And do, I have many revert friends, and I go, oh, they call fast. I said, stop talking like that. Their mothers and fathers are. How you can say that? It's not nice to hear, for them to hear. And who knows? You don't know. They raised a son who became or a daughter became good Muslim. Their du'as could be enough for the parents. 
Huh? Mm. You don't know. There's a difference between a kafir and a jahil. No, there's a difference between someone going, I denounce it, I know everything. Yeah, disbelief. Like, yeah. I, mm. I know the but truth. You tell me how you're going to see real Islam with the media now and how they yeah. portray. How are you really going to see the beauty of Islam? So you got to understand, Allah knows best. Yeah. You don't think Allah, we, we can't even think outside the box, let alone Allah knows, He sees everything, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's just a test. So bro, stop all that haram, halal, hellfire, heaven. Ugh. You guys, are, you'll lose the plot. I've seen them, I've been around. Before all these people I'm talking, I was around in the 90s, saw it all. Stop it. You're not gonna, you're gonna kill your, you're gonna go mad. Believe me, Allah granted heaven to a prostitute, kuffar woman, giving water to a dog. Dogs are haram nudges. She got, a, she's got <laughs> heaven for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But dogs are haram. What's haram? Just. Ways to be, you know, there's there's limits to everything. Uh, pigs, you can't eat a pig. Doesn't mean you have to hate the pig. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love still creating the pig. Oh, it's yeah. a pig, bro. What are you talking? We're not yeah. allowed to eat it. Not allowed to eat a dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not allowed to eat a, <laughs> not allowed to eat a cat. You know what I mean? You can't eat an animal which eats meat. Can't what's it called? That's what it is. So like, bro, it's just it's culture. It's it's it's, it's sorry to say, but it's a lot of uh, naivety and just. Bro, I've gone past those. I can't even entertain it. When I see a convo like that, I'm like, later. SubhanAllah, man. When I first reverted to Islam, I was very spiritual. I, I felt like I had a very close connection with Allah. But then the more that I went to it, everyone was trying to like, be very strict with me. Very like, oh, it has to be like this. It has to be like that. Like, you, you have to be doing this. This is haram. This is halal. And like, I'm not gonna lie, I, I tried to adhere to it because you think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going into it, I don't know anything. And I felt like that connection started to waver off. I even started dipping into the root of extremism, going to like the super Salafi type thing. And then after like more experience, you just start chilling out and you start realizing, oh, Islam is very simple. Mm. Having that connection with Allah is very simple. Look, I don't comment sal super Salafi things. I don't wanna offend anyone. Everyone's got their belief and there's some really good brothers in every group, you know? Some I don't accept it, even Muslim, in my opinion, but it's haram in my opinion, if I'm wrong. My point is, you come tomorrow to me, say, yo, Tam, I want to fight. You come for like, you've just joined the gym. Am I going to put you in a professional fight with a Dagestani next week? What's, why? What's going to happen? I'm going to make you run? You're going to you're gonna get destroyed. It's like Islam. How are you going to like slowly take your time, learn? This, do this haram, you can't. Just take your time. Learn the basics. It's like going to the gym the first day. Next week I go, UFC. You're fighting Deontay Wilder. Put your gloves on. You're going to be, you probably be paralyzed. You know what I'm saying? There's a process. It's like a big cake, like Shamsi said. I like his analogy. It's piece, piece by piece. You're not going to devour the whole cake. You'll be sick, you'll vomit, you'll collapse. That's like, don't push it all on them. When he reverts, he always says it to him, take your time. Here's some books. I like the way he does it with a reverse. Don't grab the cake and eat all. You'll be sick, no? You'll crap. You, you don't want it to turn. Just take it, have a piece and come back and whatever. That's Islam. Just be easy, man. Like, relax. Mm. You're going to just uh, depress yourself. If you're extreme in life, you'll be extreme in everything you do. Because mm. how you do one thing is how you do everything. Oh. Yeah. That's facts. Bro, we could talk all day. I just we like, could, but let's make a wrap because i got to yeah. see my daughters. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah. Uh, it's late and right, any sleep. questions you would have for us bro before we wrap up no questions bro just inshallah respect what you do it's good alhamdulillah keep it on and uh, you're all very good you're keeping close to the end so that's important but my advice I'm older than you don't overcomplicate things just enjoy yeah. it bro uh, tomorrow never comes and <laughs> enjoy it but in a halal way just don't be too serious relax and uh, what's to be will be that's all I say. Like, and have kids. Don't don't delay. If you can have kids, have kids. If you can't, then sure, there's always ways. Yeah. There's always a spam and pill and stuff and certain <laughs> salads and vegetables that work around. <laughs> but just try your best. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah, you'll see then. Trust me. Uh, it's the best thing. Isn't it crazy, bro? If the next time we meet, we're like fathers. Inshallah, yeah, inshallah. you never know. Inshallah, you know. inshallah. Oh, we may never meet each other again, and some of us die. That's, that's true. true. May Allah reunite us in Jannah then. Allah Allah. 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 So I mean, that's it. So my point is that, and uh, to everyone out there, yeah, bro, just Islam is it's beautiful, and just just take do what you can. Don't stress yeah. if I, you don't wear hijab. Don't stress. 
You're not praying if you're struggling, don't stress. Allah understands, He sees every struggle. Just try step by step. And if you need advice, speak to someone you can trust or someone knowledge or someone who's good. Don't go to extreme. Like, speak yeah. to someone on a level. Don't like kill yourself. I'm not doing right because you're. Um, it's not good. Doesn't matter. Don't let let people think what they think. Who cares? Only Allah judges you. Would you care about yes. Abdullah Ahmed and whoever you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. It's a, it's a it's a grave sin to even think that. Oh, I'm so far gone that Allah will not understand me. He won't forgive me. So we shouldn't even think of Allah like that, right? Yeah. And Allah says, you know, I whatever am you do, things. I always say, whatever sin, pray. Hmm. Don't feel shame. Just pray. It's Allah. Yeah. It's your creator. Whatever you've done, just please pray. You'll feel better. Just always pray. Try your best. Alhamdulillah. At least do the faras. You know, that's it. Yeah. Try. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you can't pray, go to the jamaat and just pray in a congregation. Let the imam lead. That's it. Yeah. There's always a solution true. for everyone. There's always a solution, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You guys have anything else? No, I think that's good. Beautiful. Jazakallah right. khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the best men we could be. Allahumma I mean, May Allah mm-hmm. make us good fathers as well. Alhamdulillah, lots of talks of being a dad. I'm very excited, inshallah, one day. Inshallah, you rab. And guys, to anyone that made it this far, comment down below, hashtag TKMMAFIT, so we know who stayed past the three-hour mark. I don't know. I feel like most of y'all couldn't make it this far. But for the real ones, let us know, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. Time is and a pleasure, everyone bro. who does that, can visit and anyone who's in Dubai, whoever does that, what you said, I'll give them a free half, free month membership. So that proves... Ooh. Wow, free month. Free month. I'll have to check with you guys. Yeah, so a free yeah. month. So that proves if you watched it. You're about to get like 50,000 people coming, man. Inshallah. That being said. Oh yeah, with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nar. We'll see you guys on the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.